an international Zoom to do on Saturday, internationally, throughout the whole wow. world. Oh, and okay. I'm going to get that fixed. Yes, yes. Well, we're live here right now at the station of decapitation without your head. I'm Nasty Neal. This is Annabelle Lecter. And we're joined by Tamara Glenn. Hi, everyone. Oh, and Eileen Dietz. And they're both in the new film that's coming up. And we'll tell you how you can uh, help get it made with child. So it's very cool to have you both here. So, uh, for, yeah, hey, first, first of all, I know we, we don't want to give too much away of the movie, but uh, Tamara, how did you get involved in with child? Oh boy, that's a loaded question. Um, so I think how it all went down, I contacted Jeff, the filmmaker, the writer, and then my um, someone I'm working with, Alexi Angelino, uh, she contacted Jeff as well. So I told him, I mean, I was I was really impressed with what I was seeing and I expressed interest that I would really, you know, appreciate the opportunity uh, to be a part of it. Yeah. Very cool. And uh, you'll be playing the doctor in the film, which I am is OBGYN. Interesting. Oh, that's interesting. very interesting. Knowing a little <laughs> bit about knowing a little bit about the promise, because there isn't a lot of information about there, but there's twisted pregnancy and in, in the um oh i can't remember what it was it was like a little mini teaser thing so you know there's there's creepy haunting children out there and psychicness so babies and creepy children and you know i figured that when i had my son um my 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 son was almost a ten, he was almost 10 pounds wow my son came out the size of like a, I mean, like a linebacker. So I figure if I can do that, um, that I can go, yeah, I can go play a, um, a creepy doctor with some damn creepy babies out there. <laughs> now, did you know Jeff and Alexi before this? I did. Yes. Well, I didn't, Jeff. Um, I was familiar with um, his name, just, you know, via Facebook. And then I work with Alexi um, quite a bit. So yeah, that's how it all came about. And then I heard that Eileen was coming on board and I was super excited about that. Um, I've known Eileen for years. And um, yeah. And the you introduced me to two of my best friends. Which two? With uh, Bart Masseroni. Yeah. And, you know, I knew Bart before, but the fuzz on the lens guys. Yeah, I yeah, didn't yeah. know them before that. Yeah, so that's how. So I lean met Bart Masseroni and the Levy boys, Michael and Jason, plus all the fuzz on the lens guys. Actually, I lean met them in my home state of Arkansas. Mm -hmm. So we had, when I had the festival with my, um, former co-founder um we it was the first year and eileen we brought her in to be our honorary lifetime achievement um recipient so yeah we go like way 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 back <laughs> very cool and have you ever worked uh in the same movie before eileen oh. have we no 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 no, no. <laughs> no. let's no, just we... say no and say this will be the first time ever yeah, <laughs> yeah going to be the first i can't remember we don't have any scenes together i don't think no so it'll be the same movie but not with each other yeah yeah well, that's all right and now uh, lynn, La lynn lowry's also in the movie now um are you both friends with lynn i've known lynn for years not friends but known her <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we're not close. You know, I, if I needed something or she needed something, we could get in touch with each other. So, um, yeah, I guess the kind of friends, right? Not best friends. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're I, friendly I've, acquaintances. I have many friendly acquaintances as well. I've only met Lynn um, one time at a convention. Thomas. Uh, but that, no problem. I've, oh, never mind. <laughs> She's trying to get the the Pazuzu statue here behind her, but it's not up already. That. Yeah, it it it, uh, it it popped up behind her without. Yeah, it's kind of showing. Yeah. Can you see it better? Yeah, yeah, it's right above your head yeah. there. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. No worries, no worries. 
What was the festival? I'm sorry, Tamar, when you mentioned uh, when you brought Eileen Beats into the festival. So it was back in, I believe it was 2013. Wow. And yeah, that was a long time ago. And it was the Hot Springs International Horror Film Festival. So, um, yeah, there were so many great friendships um, that it's so cool that I guess that was like a relationship building time because just about everyone still to this day, you know, we've all like worked together. Or people have stayed in close touch and we support each other and encourage and love on each other. So, um, yeah, that's been 10 years ago. Yeah, the 10th wow. anniversary. <laughs> so are you still on? We just came. We're actually going to talk after after we wrap up with you guys when you're, you're like ready to leave us and like be gone, Neil and Annabelle. But we just came back from a film festival, the Renegade Film Festival, which is amazing, very inclusive and wonderful. And so it's so interesting. So you were, it sounds like you were running this festival. Um, yeah, so long story short, uh, my boy, ah. that's my Archie Bar. <laughs> so my, my boyfriend at the time, um, he owned a, um, a classic theater um that was built circa like 1900 in hot, hot springs arkansas and he was um a production designer and he had been in film his entire life he was originally from san diego so um yeah he and i were boyfriend and girlfriend he had the theater and we had this dream to have a film festival a film festival which was absolutely amazing so like I said, that that's what opened the door for, you know, like, you know, legends like Eileen to come in and then I pulled some more Halloween people in and then filmmakers from all over the world. And um, it was quite, quite the treat. So, yeah, very grateful for that. Very cool. Do you still and I, got, I, I got a hot springs massage. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> which is amazing. And I also got to drive past Bill Clinton as our former president. Yep. Yes. Wow. So Very there were good. oh, and remember that house that I went to that had all those antiques in it? Yes. Cool yes. Yes. That was, yes. That was yes. awesome. Yes. Yes. That was that was crazy. So yeah, I really got to experience um you know, um, a nice touch of hot springs, you know, during her stay there. And, um, you know, I mean, that it was, that was just like a dream come true for me. I mean, my God, Eileen Deeds is at your film festival. I mean, how much better can that, that just really, I don't want to cry, but that just really, mm -hmm. really, really touched me. And, you know, having the festival, which I've left since, um, you know, the energy from Eileen and Fuzz on the Lens, which is now the Terrifier guys yeah. and Abnormal Attraction and all of that, right. just be being able to watch their success and see Eileen continue working nonstop. I mean, it's just, it's pretty cool. And anybody yeah. wants an old lady, they call me. <laughs> <laughs> I would say everyone wants a fun, a uh, fun horror icon at their at their yes. convention, at their I festival. That's probably it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I now I, I'm to the age where, honestly, and this could so work. Um, Eileen can actually play my mom, maybe. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I young my mom. If they younged me. I must I have like had it. you when I was really young. <laughs> you had me when you were 10. <laughs> 10, 12. Yeah, that would work. 10, 12. Hey, in Arkansas, Eileen, that would work. <laughs> My best friend, her mom had her when she was 16. So, yeah, you know. See, it works yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> Now, I know Tamara can't be with us too long because uh, some very rude guy uh, woke her up very late last night and, and she's been up ever since. But he apologizes for that. Thank you. You yeah. apologize to Tamara? I do. I do. I do. <laughs> but uh, so anytime you need to go, we understand. And we'll have you back on another time and we'll do uh, a longer interview with you. No, I'm good for for a few more minutes. I mean, All my right. normal my normal bedtime is like eight to nine. Uh -huh. oh, but. But getting messages from you at 2.30 in the morning, Neil, 
Um, <laughs> but no, I mean, I've got um, 10 or 15 more minutes and I want Eileen to totally talk. I would love for her to speak more about with child. She's been, um, you know, with some other cast with Jeff and, and I'm excited to hear what she has to say myself. Okay. Yeah. But uh, can I ask, who is the lovely lady in the yellow? I don't oh. know. I years ago I did interview for this show when there was no cameras. I'm Annabelle. That was a long time ago. I have no question you are not. So are you a co-host? Yes. Yeah. I'm an occasional co-host because my work lifestyle has changed. You but. could almost almost play an early Shelly Duval, a prettier mm-hmm. Shelly Duval. <laughs> That's a compliment. That's very kind. I love That's that. huge, yeah. <laughs> well, welcome. <laughs> Um, I can talk about with child. Yeah. I mean, um, I've done a lot of indie films. I mean, like a lot. I've done 16 in the last year and a half. And two wow. Years. And with child, though, is it's just got to be at the top of my list. It's um, it's so unique. It's 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 talking about something that um, I don't know any horror films that are out there, which I like to call thrillers difference between a horror film and a thriller to me is today horror films are all blood and guts and no plot, no characters, no nothing. They just get their cameras, buy blood at some kind of, you know, special effects store. And it's all just kind of grotesque. So it's a terrifier. It's not terrifying. I haven't (laughs) seen terrifier. It's too gross for me. (laughs) It, um, it is very graphic. No, it really is. I mean, I, I, I love there. it, but not the one for you. Oh, I wish I was in it. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I can be in things that I'm not going to watch. Um, Fair enough. I said, what do you do to get into Terrifier 3? Come on. Mm. But um, with Child, Jeff, uh, who uh, I call him Jeff K because I'm terrible with names. Um, He did have this idea to shoot this film. They had a real tragedy in their family and they had a child die after it was born. And so he needed to express himself and and put this on paper. So he came up with this amazing film about a woman who's pregnant, the father of the baby dies and um, she's just faced with with these unusual creatures that keep coming to see her and don't want this child to be born. Um, They want her to abort this child because of what it might be when it grows up. And that's all I'm gonna say without any spoilers. So you you have a conflict of a woman that desperately wants to keep her baby naturally um, without a husband to support her or a guy and all these really strange things just keep happening that, you know, she said, no, no, I want to keep my baby. I want to keep my baby. And, um, the FX and the special effects on it are going to be absolutely amazing. Um, and I've seen some of it. Um, and believe me, um, uh, Tara too, we know a lot about horror films. I mean, a lot. So if we're saying this is unique, you got to agree with us. It is definitely unique. And there's FX and children and masks and just a little bit of everything. But it'll, it'll, it'll keep you glued to the edge of your seat. When not, when not Je- by a medium, by the way, that she comes to, her friend makes her I'll come and consult maybe about what's going on spiritually and what I can do. So I get involved in this entire plot. Of, of what's going on and you know despite my despite my wishes it's a wonderful part it's exciting to play and the girl who's playing the pregnant lady her name is laura wilson and she lives in the uk and we went to chicago and shot a teaser uh, a teaser concept and mm-hmm. you guys that are listening to this that you can find it do you guys have the link i don't have the link on Y'all have, i'll put i'll yeah. put i think i already have it in the uh in the video here, but I'll make sure to include it on the website. Go check it out. Laura is just an absolutely wonderful actress. And, um, you know, her husband, her, not her husband, but the brother of her husband convinces her to come see me and see if we can find out uh, what, what's so horrific is happening in her life. So it's a real cool concept. 
uh, things, I should watch it. Yeah. Is this where we do the pitch or do we wait? <laughs> <laughs> no uh we'll have the link up for the indiegogo p- campaign and there's uh like you said you can watch the um the video to it, you could see you playing the fortune teller and you can see all the cool perks you can get a and fortune teller i'm a medium a, a medium i'm sorry <laughs> fortune teller on the website but yeah. uh, anyway i'm talking too much and and you have to leave i do but, i still call you tomorrow i hope that's okay i don't call you tam um and she has to leave so why don't you talk about your impression when you read the script you know, it's so important um when you find those scripts like eileen is talking about this one is very unique and i'm just going to let you guys know we're in the second trimester campaign um on indiegogo there are fantastic perks that I think everyone, I mean, everything naming characters to, I know a couple of the, um, the pictures that they posted on Facebook of me and my character, um, you know, those autograph pictures, you know, come as a perk as well. Um, there's just so much fun stuff. And I'm personally, I don't ask people a lot to please, 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 help us be a part of our team um but i'm i'm gonna ask this time and this is it's got to be special for me to ask i'm not one to oversaturate i'm not one to beg but you guys please help please beg please please Please. (laughs) okay eileen said it i'm begging you i am so begging you we need your assistance in this and we want we're gonna make this film it's going to be made but i I want i I, we all want you guys involved and we want the fans everything i lean and i do you know it's for the fans because we love the fans um and we want to give you guys something unique um something a little different that maybe you haven't seen in a while or or ever seen cinematically so if you guys can give i don't care if it's five bucks go without buying eggs for a week you know take that six dollars for a carton of eggs and donate without it buying a starbucks <laughs> yeah just one starbucks six dollars i paid six dollars and ten cents <laughs> you the know, other day and i was just no i can't <laughs> You know, forget about the bacon for a week. No, but I, I mean, I'm joking, but I'm not joking. But we really, really, really would appreciate y'all so much pitching in. Like I said, every little, every little dime. Yeah, help. you guys can buy a perk to um to have lunch or coffee with us on the set. Yeah, if you're near the set. And for me, if you happen to live in Hollywood or L.A. or the Valley, um, and you want to buy that perk then you can come meet me and we'll have coffee or something together. And I will give you an eight by 10 screenshot from the exorcist. If you buy that. Oh, wow. So that's unique. Right. And two, if there's something out there and I'm just, I'm just kind of throwing this out there at y'all. If there's someone who would, you know, like to come in and have, you know, lunch with me and Eileen or any of the, the actors, um, you know, where we can make it just personable and fun and someone can come and spend, you know, a day on set with us. Um, you know, we would have so much fun and just really, really, really appreciate all of your love and support. And y'all are the you're, horror. You're getting to sit down and meet, um, Two horror stars. How are you ever going to do that in your life? Unless you come to a convention and look how much money that's going to cost you to get yeah, it's in. It's not a or meal. Or it's a very different thing. A hotel yeah, it's something. much more yeah, personal. It's a very yeah. different thing. Standing in line and having like a little moment and then actually being able to sit with that undivided tension. That's, it is, that's a really special perk. You know, and also um, there are so many people out there that... Um, you know, when I are so interested in all the behind the scenes stuff. So, you know, if, if you're wanting to do something um, and donate to a perk that you do not see on Indiegogo, please get in touch with Alexi Angelino 
And um, I'm sure something, you know, there could be an appropriate solution to no whatever. No dating allowed. <laughs> I wanted to go on a date with Tam. But no, no. That's not really going to work. And my husband wouldn't want it. Any. <laughs> my husband would say go. <laughs> no, and Eileen and Eileen, if you're a sports fan, Eileen can sit there and talk sports like no oh, other really? person ever met in my I used life. to call her from Vegas when the Arkansas um the Arkansas team was playing on a Sunday and ask her if she wanted because I was in we go to Vegas every year and watch football and bet on football because we're crazy gambling degenerates. And so I can yeah. call her and say, hey, want to put a bet on the team? You know, I think they had a chance and stuff like that. <laughs> I mean, uh, like yeah. I always not bet over five dollars. Like <laughs> did, did you win any games? Did I send you money? You did. Good. I mean, we used, I mean, had like the squares out. Yeah, it was it was a minimal amount, but my hogs, my Arkansas Razorbacks, go hogs, woo! Um, they still won. So, yeah, I mean, there's other things that we can certainly talk about in life and. Um, we want you to be a part of our team. So like I said, if you guys can help, um, we would really, really, really. I think you become an executive producer. Um, not like a lot of these, you know, indie logos where it doesn't mean anything. I mean, I could tell you a screening I went to see a couple of weeks ago that I swear to God, they had 200 credits <laughs> and they were all people who were producers, mm -hmm. but. Yes, I, mean, and I, I can relate to this at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Alexa doesn't like that. You know? uh -huh. I don't either. I, 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 my, my first feature film that I produced is uh, at the festival you just mentioned. And uh, I was actually involved from the beginning. To So the idea of but people actually, just donating really a few involved. bucks to. Uh, way, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a little annoying. I like your hat, by the way. But, oh, thank um, you. I wore it specifically for the show. Well, yeah. well, what we're selling is a perk, a real executive producer. And you will get a percentage on the back end uh, when the picture makes money. Um, and that's that's from the production. It's not like in studio and stuff like that, where first they take out the cost of pencils and the papers <laughs> and the secretary's wage. This is pure profits from the movie. Now, mm -hmm. we have to be, you know, transparent here. Most pictures uh, don't make money, but Terrifier 2 is made way over 10 million dollars yeah so it, it, it's a crapshoot and anybody mm -hmm. who was a producer on that like the boys on the fuzz or, or uncle creepy um they're doing very well so it, that perk is out there you can actually be a real executive producer yeah. i think that success really has helped uh independent films get in uh theatrical releases because you know since then like the winnie the pooh movie got a, a good uh, release uh the mean ones and a few other movies Oh, no, well, it's amazing what's happening with horror films right now, Tam. Mm -hmm. There's there's the, right. the Black Phone, there's Smile, there's Barbarians. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think what's happening is you've got filmmakers like Damien and you've got the producers like Michael and Jason, the Levy Boys. And I think what's so amazing to sit back and watch, they are risking... I mean, they're going into this head first. We're going to do it our way. Um, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And they are taking so many damn risks cinematically. And I think the horror fans were, were hungry for that. And it's working. And is everyone out there? I mean, I've had so many independent people and in, independent filmmakers say, mine's going to be just like Terrifier. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to blow smoke up your butt and tell you, right. oh, you're going to be another terrifier because, you know, there's a lot that goes into this. And, you know, I was doing an interview last week and I'm like, the cool thing that Damien and David and the terrify, terrifier guys have is you're only as good as your team. And, you know, those guys, the Levy boys alone, and Eileen will agree with me on this. When those guys enter your state or enter your hotel or enter a theater, their energy is so freaking magnetic. It is insane. And you got to put the work in. 
and you just really have to tighten the reins. And you also, please, 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 no matter what, push it through post-production. You got to push these projects through post because a lot of people, they'll get money and then they will shoot and then the film will sit on the hard drive for, I mean, I... I have a few sitting on hard drives that were shot like five, six, seven years ago. And I'm like, okay, I want this movie, you know? So, but you some know, of them, some of them never get out. Exactly. I so, did a movie called them um, um, <laughs> Beverly Hills Exorcist. It's a really cool thing. I play a disembodied head um, that um, is stuck in this room and wants to get out and begs, pleads, cries, but the makeup on is phenomenal. But the point is we shot that a year, a year ago last Christmas. So it's coming out now, which is almost two years. Well, at least it's coming out, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I just saw, um, I just saw a preview of it. Mm -hmm. Talking about like the effects and everything and, and the team, you guys are, you know, the joke about begging, joke not joke about begging is that the more money it has like Tamara you said it's going to be made no matter what but the more money the higher quality of everything because it's just reality like in my life if I had more money I have way better stuff it's just <laughs> the way it works so yeah I think it's, it's yeah, but you guys girls guys um wouldn't it be fabulous to just when when the movie gets released and it will get released uh, yeah. this one will get released right um yeah walk around and tell your friends you know i'm an executive producer of this film call with child you know how cool is that you know you guys that aren't that close to movies and stuff like that um that's really cool <laughs> i mean you can come have lunch with us from anywhere in the country if you want you know we'll be there and they'll, like tam said you can have a a, a tour of, of behind the camera and see how that works, how sound works. So go into the wardrobe room and see the costume. Yeah. Definitely go into the makeup area where they're just creating magic. So I, I think that I just think that's a great perk. Yeah, that's very cool. Executive producer or spending time with us. I love and, that. Uh, and um, 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 <laughs> Lynn Lowry too. I think she's. I think that perk is also for her. No, oh, okay. very cool. Uh, uh, Tamara, when you heard that the, the story itself is so personal to Jeff, um, how does that affect you as an actor going into the movie? Deeply. Like, how, how do you Deep, feel? Deeply. It's very, it's very touching. Um, that's what, I mean, that's one reason I think, you know, we're all pushing, um, you know, especially the producer, Alexi Angelino. Um, you know, we're all passionate. We want to see this come to life. We yeah, do. not only that, but um, I think I'm not comparing this film to The Exorcist because, you know, you really can't do that. But the beauty of The Exorcist to me and why it's still lasting is because you can identify either the parents totally identified about walking into a room and seeing this monster this devil and the kids all thought they were going to change into that so with child there really is something to identify with if you've been pregnant and having a child you sure can understand what she's going through and if you've always wanted kids but don't have them like me <laughs> um i don't know if i want anyway that's a different story um but someone who wants a child and, and can understand that this kind of universal theme about having to abort a child that you've spent your whole life wanting is, I think, totally identifiable from men, women, and, and you know, a certain age children. It's not a children's film. Um, and once you can identify with the film, then I think that's the beauty of it. And all films should be like that. And we were talking about before, like Tam said, First, you got to have a script. You're going to have the best actors in the whole world and, you know, the best FX and the best everything else. But if you don't have a script, in my opinion, you don't got nothing. And this is a script. It's um, not a 
kind of a, a good coincidence that yesterday was, I believe, International Women's Day. And talking right. about like, Eileen, you just brought up all of this stuff about moms. And I was thinking of that as a question of mine, obviously written by someone who's a father, but I, there is like this something with women and the experience of, I myself have never been pregnant, but I was adopted. And there's a lot of stuff that comes with that, like ideas of pregnancy and could, what could have happened? We could, wow. I could not be here right now. Like there's so much stuff that comes with that and the fears that mothers can have about their pregnancy and the influence of families and all this stuff. So I think like you're saying, this is a very, there's something about this that for anybody who's had these kinds of thoughts, whether they're a mother or father, a kid, that it does just call to something that, that is just primal part of being a human being, like life, the beginning of life, birth. So I, I think it's really fascinating. I have noticed that there's like a couple, there seems to be a, a few movies around now that have like a little, they sound very different from what you've got, but there's like little pregnancy things going on in different movies. And I think it's really, it's very interesting how- Especially with you know, Roe Ro versus Wade being dumped. It's, it's yeah. obviously totally a universal thing. And I don't know anybody, uh, and I do know people who aborted their child for many reasons. And I don't know anybody that doesn't, uh, I'm not saying they regret it, but they remember it. Yeah. And they always remember it for the rest of their lives. So aborting a child is not an easy decision. Yeah. And that's what with child is about so much. You know, if you know something's going to happen with your kid, I mean, even medically, right? Something's yeah. going to happen with your kid. What do you do? Yeah. What do you do? Well, another, another element of this, another aspect that's so cool about Jeff is you know, having a male, a man write it mm -hmm. and then having this amazing stellar, you know, female cast. Yeah. Well, just real quick, Alexi in the chat, they're, they're both in the chat, Alexi and Jeff. And Alexi said that it's a 80% women led film cast crew and producer. She says what? Can you? Oh, uh, it's 80% uh, women led uh, film cast crew and producer. Yeah. And that's, that's a rarity. That's rare, y'all, because normally, I mean, so that in itself says a lot about Jeff and, you know, just this project as a whole. And it's an honor to be a part of it. Absolutely. I'm excited. I'm excited. I have two films coming out. The other one's called The Dark World of Oz. Which I, I need a scene with Ivy. Do you have to go? What? Wait, I think what she said she wants to no, see I'm it. I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm fine, y'all. I don't yeah. have to go yet. See what? <clears throat> uh, your movie, the, the Dark World of Oz. Oh, yeah. That's going to be amazing. That was but, very cool. Just the name alone. Your imaginers. Who hasn't seen The Wizard of Oz? So even if it has nothing to do with that, my brain just takes off in creative ways. Yeah, well, this is the, the monster. This is the grim tale. Not grim as in feeling grim, but <laughs> the... Writer brings. Like, yeah. If you read those fairy tales, oh, they are fairy oh, yeah. tales. They, yeah. they, they are scary. And so yeah. this is the, the grim version of Oz where the cowardly lion and um, uh, the cowardly lion and the, the tin man and um, the scarecrow are all monsters. And then you okay. have your natural goblins and stuff like that. And I'm playing NTM. Oh, really? Child abuse. Oh, wow. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Has abused Dorothy all her life. Wow. We did a, a trailer concept on that one, too. It was, it was so much fun. It was so much fun. My character was so mean. <laughs> so awful. What's it like to play? So I don't believe your character. So, Tamara, your character is kind of nasty mean in this film. Or just like, just wait and see, wait and see. All right. Wait, wait. No spoilers. Okay, no spoilers. Like, I'm trying, to, like, I just, you know, I just, I don't want any spoilers. I'm, I'm really pulling in the reins when it comes to doing these interviews before, like, going into, because I don't, because so many people out there are giving, like, their entire movie away. Yeah. By the time every cast member is interviewed and by, you know, 
And I'm just, I'm just kind of over here sitting on the sidelines, just going, you'll see. It's like when you <laughs> see trailers, trailers for over the past probably like 10 years, yeah. you just know beginning to end. You see like every, every. Yeah. Well, I mean, some, some trailers, I mean, that's the entire movie. Yeah. Oh, you know? yeah. Yeah. But I just forget, like I'm, I have no attention span. So I just go, <laughs> it's all fresh to me. <laughs> uh, Jeff also says that the kids are truly horrifying in With Child. Apparently, <laughs> the masks are great. They're, well, they don't—they're not masks, really. Their their faces are all misshapen and grotesque. And like, if you again, if you go on the website mm -hmm. uh, for with child or Jeff's website, I guess you you'll mm -hmm. post all that. Uh, you'll yeah, see yeah, there's a Facebook group and yeah, on the Indiegogo page. Yeah, some of there's some art. Pregnant. There is some really cool concept art out there. Yeah. I don't know if it was on Jeff Page. It's one of these many places, and they were they were really cool and very creepy. It's it'll haunt you, you know. It'll yeah. haunt your dreams. I promise you that. If, if that's you know, it, it will it will haunt you for a while. Uh, and if Jeff someone, if oh, it, and, wait a minute, I have to say something. If yeah. the from the Exorcist can say something's gonna haunt <laughs> for a while, you <laughs> bet. <better, better laughs> haunt you that's for true, a while. Yeah. <laughs> That was a very yeah. I <laughs> uh, say so Jeff says the uh, the effects team is a, a woman led team. Which is that unusual for horror films that the the effects uh, team is female? I think it is. I don't think I know any others. Do you, Tim? No, no. Yeah, I don't think I and I know a lot of X FX people. Yeah. You do probably too. And yeah. Yeah, I know Larry Bones that is Oz. His wife is also working on it because when right. not writing movies, they're, they're some of the best FX artists in in Los Angeles. And I think his wife Cheryl works with him. But other than that, I don't know any. It's a good point. Yeah. It's very inspiring. It's very inspiring. I remember being a kid and looking at like young when there were no girls looking at Fangoria magazine at all. And I'd like sneak into the this where they used to sell cigarettes in the mall, the tiny little shop, like right under the porn. Was <laughs> <laughs> and their men would just part as this like 12 year old girl wanders over. And I'd look at this stuff and be like, this is so amazing. This is so cool. I want to do it. I want to do it. And then it's like, mm. so I think it's so inspirational to hear about women who get involved in that stuff. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. It's so kick ass. I mean, <laughs> like this is when I say it's rare and Eileen can vouch for this as well. I mean, to have like, like they said, 80% women. Yeah. I mean, let's go girls. And I met them. I met them when we did the, uh, the concept teaser that we were all in Chicago. They're wonderful people, wonderful people. And, you know, we took, a. um, I don't know how they finagled that. I think Laura did it, but uh, they gave us one of the rooms at the uh, hope it was actually a motel that we were staying at. And they actually gave us one of the rooms and she transformed it into this medium's den, as it were, and like a nothing, you know. And did they statue? They created this whole atmosphere, the, the whole thing. They they were great people. Did they sneak a Pazuzu figure into the scene? <laughs> Jamie Apple. Kind of. Oh yeah, that's uh Alexi here in the chat says Jamie oh. Apple is our amazing effects artist. And Angie, um, I forget her name. Is because she, she also she's also an actress and worked on special effects. Angel, Angie, I'm sorry, guys. If you watch this, I'm really sorry. I should grab my cell phone and find out what it is. <laughs> You can post uh, it, okay? Post, we'll post their names. Definitely, we definitely. Will. They really deserve the credit. Yeah, uh, Vanessa, right here in the chat, who runs uh, Renegade uh, Festival, um, she said, "For years, Hollywood has conditioned us to believe that women age out, and it's been wonderful to see horror films embracing women of all ages and keeping our careers going strong." Amen. Amen. Women always used to be, you know, the victims. All, all the time, women were victims, even if it was Halloween. And now women are becoming heroes in films and horror films. And that's a good thing. 
I played a lot of demons and witches. <laughs> it's so much fun to play, but um, you know they're female. They're female demons and whatnot. Uh, Jeff and Alexi, let us know. It's uh, Angel Br- Bradford is the assistant effects artist. Thank you. Thank She's you, also Angel. Acting in the film. Thanks, you Angel. Thanks, <laughs> Angel. <laughs> they they were really fun to work with. I mean, we, we you know we did this concept in one day in mm-hmm. Chicago, um, and I got to meet Jeff in person and his wife and his daughter, and so the whole thing was it was it was great fun. Yeah. Uh, Tamara, when did you like, um, find out that you had like a following in the horror world? Cause you know, you did Halloween five and did you know, like people followed that movie and you as an actor or was it like when you started to do conventions? Dude, Halloween five was like back in the stone age. <laughs> um, so I shot Halloween five. Well, the release date, um, it was. Re- the theatrical release was Friday, um, October the 13th, 1989. And so, no, I mean, none of this existed. Mm-hmm. And then what happened was I moved back to Arkansas to take care of uh, family because my grandfather was dying at the time of cancer. And by then I've been married and I'm, I have child. And, um, one day after, you know, it was a few years after, you know, Facebook was invented. Um, I was, I was online one day and I was scrolling and this is like the craziest story ever. I was scrolling and on my feed was Halloween movies. And there was their big page with like 1 million plus followers so I was in a mood that day and I swear this was just something that was so meant to be. So I sent them um, a Facebook in well, a Facebook inbox message. And I'm like, hey, it's Tamara Glenn. Just writing to say hello. You probably don't remember me. And um, anyways, hope all is well with all the Halloweens and thanks for reading this. Talk to you later. And and about two or three minutes, Justin Beam, who was working with Trankus um, and Malik Akkad at the time, Justin wrote me back. He goes, Tamara. And I'm like, yeah. He goes, is this really you? And I'm like, yeah, it's really me. He goes, are you freaking kidding? And I'm like, no. And he said, can you take a phone call here in about 10 minutes? And I said, sure. And so in the meantime, he said, do you mind if I announce on the big Halloween movies page, carrying a million people, um, that we are in contact with you and that we found you? And I'm like, well, I've been in Arkansas the whole time. So, <laughs> you know, do what do what you want. I said, but no one will ever freaking remember who I am. And he said, I don't think you understand this. So he announced it on the big 1 million Halloween, the official Halloween movies page. And um, my mom was dying at the time. And I just know that this, the most amazing surreal miracle in my life, other than my child, um, happened. And that's where all the fans started pouring in. All the filmmakers started pouring in. and. Um, I mean, there were filmmakers flying to Arkansas to meet with me about starring in their movies. I mean, it literally, it just got crazy. And, you know, I, I'm so grateful. And I know that I'm an only child and my son is my only living family that I have left. Everyone else has passed away. And um, I just know that God in the universe knew that I was going to need like a beautiful support system to get me through losing my mom because I was her caregiver for like 10 years. So it's just like looking back now, the timeline of events, um, you know, getting to meet legends like Eileen, getting to work with so many amazing filmmakers and actors and writers. Um that's just, and the fans, I mean, my God, you know, and just being a part of, you know, Halloween. And then I did this humongous like fan film for Friday the 13th, you know, Vengeance Bloodlines 2, 
with CJ and Darcy and Tommy McLaughlin and all of them. And then I did Freddy's Nightmares, Nightmare on Elm Street, the series. And then, I mean, it's just been one thing right after the other. And then, you know, the cameo and Terrifier comes about. And um, I've never in my life, I mean, it's so surreal. I am so grateful. And it's really cool because, I mean, and I can attest to this, you know, because we do so many conventions, um, you know, the cool thing about the conventions are, are, is that now they're like multi-generational. So you've got fans of all ages coming up, you know, in a family. And um, I mean, it's, it's some days it's pretty hard to like wrap your head around and it's like, okay, I'm doing exactly what I need to be doing. And you know, I do try to get back to the fans as often as I can. And Jeff, if you want to add this part, I will make you, I will make you, if you want to donate um, to our project, I will bake you either a loaf of banana bread or my <laughs> amazing chocolate chip cookies. That could also be a <laughs> banana but, bread. Um, Nuts or no nuts in your banana bread? whatever anyone prefers <laughs> I, I do nuts and I don't do nuts. So, you know, this has just been a super, um, just like every day I'm like, wow, what's next. And I mean, y'all motivate me. Um, the filmmakers motivate me. The fans are my primary source of motivation because I want to give the fans what they freaking want because I'm that kind of person, you know, I want to make them so happy and high-fiving and, you know, we can see what the fans have done just from all the terrifier love, you know, and I embrace that. Nothing is to be taken in for granted. And, um, you know, um, the future is very, very, very bright, very grateful. And we have things I got at them. I don't know if you do them like cameo where you can get. I'm not on cameo. Them. I should be on cameo. I'm not. Yeah, on cameo. Well, it's you know, <laughs> kind of simple. Um, they, they want you to do a happy birthday or a happy right. anniversary or stuff. And so what I generally do is I go, hi, this is Eileen from the exorcist. And I want you to meet my friend Pazuzu. Hello. What do you want? <laughs> I want you to wish so-and-so a happy birthday. I'm busy. Busy doing what? Possessing people. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> so that's how it kind of goes. And, you know, it's a, it's a real fun thing to do to make, you know, uh, you know, little extra cash online and, and the fans are really happy. And um, I don't do much Valentine's stuff. So. <laughs> or Christmas, but everywhere around I do a lot. So, yeah, I, I, I know in my life, that when I think about it, which is a lot, how incredibly blessed we are. I mean, what is the percentage, not only in the country, but Low. in the world, Low. of people yeah. who do things like we do or do conventions or pay you, you know, to sign your name on the picture? You know, I, I, I don't... I always say, I don't want to sound like Pollyanna, but what's wrong with that? <laughs> I want to be like Pollyanna. Um, but... I get up in the every morning and I bless the fact that I can do what I want and make a living it. And then the fact that all these movies are coming along lately, because I've reached an age, I think where the competition is much less, you know, everybody else is dead. Um, uh, and, or they can't afford D Wallace or you know, stuff like that. So um, I think it's miraculous. And I know Tam agrees with me. You know, well, I, I mean, it's, so it's, much work it's, coming up for the 50th anniversary. It is. I got all these shows coming up and films and it, it, it's just. Yeah. Awesome. It's so and to what um, I was talking to. Hang on. OK, sorry. Um, I was talking to um, my team the other day and I said, you know, fans always ask for Samantha Thomas photo ops you know, putting the red devil, you know, barn outfit on and doing photo ops with. So right now I'm seriously thinking about having that option, the photo op of Samantha Thomas available 
in 2024. I mean, why not? With yeah. pitchfork and all, and let's just freaking bring her back to life. You know, might as well. <laughs> Nobody wants photo ops of me. They just want to zoom. And I'm not going to sit there and put all that makeup on. I mean, really, I, people weren't asking for photo ops at convention, and I couldn't figure out why. And suddenly it came to me. <laughs> They don't want to take a picture of me. They want a picture of that person on your hat. You know, well, and, it is uh, good that you don't normally look like this. So I guess that's true. But I, and I'm also not going to be one of those people that you know. I mean, I know Sid Hay used to do it all the time, bless his soul. But I'm not going to be one of those people that put on all that makeup for. Uh, that's a lot because there's like yeah. teeth okay. involved and everything. Well, enough without photo ops. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, Sid Haig uh, was the first guest ever on the show uh, when we started right? in 2006. Oh, wow. yeah. yeah, he so, lived a good life, and you know, yeah, and definitely life. a guy that uh, was really a life of the convention scene, and uh, and, just, uh, and, and you could tell he generally Mosley. loved the fans. And he and Bill Mosley, you mm -hmm. know, Bill is one of those great, great people that appreciates everything that's happened to him. He just loves it. He's a great person for fans. Did you catch what Jamie Lee Curtis said at the SAG Awards? No, I didn't it. actually. It was so cool. Apparently, she was in the TV series Petticoat Junction, mm -hmm. which her dad, Tony Curtis, had also produced. And they fired her after a year, which, you know, can be absolutely devastating to any actor. And she said, But you know what? If I was still on that show, I never would have done Halloween. And my whole life would have been totally different. And it was such, for me, it was just such an inspiring thing to say. But when you lose that in a park, but you get to do another one and stuff like that, it was so cool. Yeah. And you really don't. Yeah, you can quote happen. that tomorrow. You can quote <laughs> that if you want from Halloween. <laughs> Good. Yeah. I mean, my God. I mean, we're approaching, I think, 34, 34 years ago this October. Ouch. She, 34, 35, actually 35, because I did that when I was, we shot a tribe when I was 20. I will be 55 in December. And you look so well. Wow. <laughs> yeah. But, I it's mean, just, but I mean, but it's so bizarre that we didn't have all this technology back in the day i mean my oh, god so I about that i would have taken all this stuff from the exorcist and you get, <laughs> you know, the, the, the contacts and, and and the teeth and the original script i sell scripts um but which are copies of the original but it's not my script oh we would have we would have taken you know little prosthetics or <laughs> yeah. there were all kinds of things that we would have kept if we knew this was happening which by yeah. the way you can still buy if you go to <laughs> That's my little pitch. Just, yeah. just go to my uh, my Facebook page to Eileen Deeds and choose the one, please, with me and my, my husband and I, because I don't know why I have three others. Um, and, you, you know, you can ask me any questions you want or, you know, if you're interested in buying things that I have to sell. Mm -hmm. Some of them are behind me. Yeah, yeah. I think I need a Pazuzu back here behind me. On, on my book I sell show. those statues for sure, yeah. you know. <laughs> They're fun yeah. to have. And by the way, there are also some say that actually she's good luck for pregnant women. Maybe we can put that into with child. You know? mm. There you go. Yeah. Well, yeah, Jeff and Alexi like the cookie idea. So no, I see a lot of cookie uh, remarks here in the chat. So the cookies, Tamara baking the cookies, that seems like a big hit amongst the, everybody here. What? I'm uh, she banana mentioned bread. either cooking uh, a, uh, cookies or, uh, or banana bread. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, or banana bread. And I could do a little video shout out type thing while I'm baking, like, la, 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 and have my music <laughs> in the background, you know. Yeah. Seriously, I would so do that for. <laughs> I love the creativity. Yeah. Support our damn movie. Come on. <laughs> I, like to make cookies. I don't know, Tamara. Your five minutes is up. <laughs> it was really nice to have you there he said oh she only has five minutes well i did until i got on here and then i i'm drinking like a double espresso over here because of neil's butt like messaging <laughs> 30 a.m 
So I've been up because everyone that knows me knows that I cannot go back to sleep once I'm up in the middle of the night. So now that I got Eileen and all of y'all and I got my coffee going <laughs> and I'm warming coffee. I can't go to sleep, sleep, not sleep for love or money. I can't. Her. My husband just, he's gone. You know? <laughs> anyway, it's actually five o'clock. Oh Five yeah, you one. yeah, you said just uh, real real quick. I want to say, Alexi says that one of the perks is Tamara Glenn's film costume. Also, perk is to name her doctor character. Ooh, interesting. Please Great. name what? my character. So, uh, oh, so one of the perks doctor? is you can name her her doctor character. Yeah. Happy fun. Give, yeah. give me a fucking cool name, okay? <laughs> I don't yeah, want I'm like a... Doctor Smith or Doctor Johnson. <laughs> give me Doctor Dean. Sounds good, doesn't it? Doctor. I want something. It's a good alliteration. <laughs> yeah. I want like something badass and something that will stick with people. And yet not That's something a- like Dr. Zombie. Like it's gotta be. No, I-, <laughs> I want like a really cool doctor name. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm going to end this with just another pitch. You know, yeah. I hope you've had fun listening to us and hearing us. But the bottom line truly is this is a very unique film and it, it's going to scare you. And, and they have wonderful perks on it. And I'm like, Tam, I never, never go. I, I mean, I got 5,000 friends on Facebook and I very, very rarely go on Facebook and ask people to give money for things. Because if you do one, you're going to end up doing 50. And, um, but I'm so in love with this project that I can sit here and say, please, I will beg you. I'll beg you. I'll implore you. <laughs> they used to do that on telephones. Um, but I do, uh, we both um, ask you to give us something, you know, and every, every little bit helps. And, you can and, and, if you, and if you come to set, if you come to set, you will not only get to hang with us over whatever, a coffee, a pizza, a ribeye or whatever, we will also <laughs> <A> ribeye. <laughs> we will also <laughs> give for that. <laughs> we will also give you a big hug, and you can take a lot of like selfies and some really cool stuff because that's just that would be a blast. And like I said, you- if you meet me in Hollywood, I'll give you an eight by ten a screenshot. Probably you probably want one of the different shots from Pazuzu. So see, exactly. we got we got swag, yeah. we got stuff. Yeah, this is very cool. Well, uh, we all, we appreciate you both coming on tonight. It's been very fun. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry all for I waking you up really early in the morning. And... Tamara, I'm so glad you got to stay. It's been really good to <laughs> yeah. have both of you here. It's been really a lot of fun and great to learn about this film. It's very important and. Like I said, you know, y'all can go without eggs for a week. You can go without filling your gas tank up for a week instead <laughs> of being a full, you know, just get like 10 or $15 worth. And I mean, I'm kidding, but I'm really not kidding because we're going to make this movie and it's going to be so freaking amazing. And all of y'all are going to be so proud. Yeah, just walk around and say, you know, that I'm a producer or that, that I was part of this. I mean, can you imagine? I don't know. Did Terrifier have? A, a fun page, but can you imagine all these people walking around saying, I'm part of Terrifier too? I mean, you know, how cool is that? Or it's scream. Really, the new it screen is, is opening up. It, it's really special. It is. And I just know how much fun that, you know, people would have hanging out with me and Eileen and Lynn. Yeah. I mean, how could you not? Yeah. How could you not? I mean, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. Eileen, I love you. Too. I love you too. <laughs> I'm glad, glad you invited me to the festival. Me too. Anyway, we're, right. gonna, uh, we're both going to say goodbye. And, um, yes. you know, the thing, if, if you do send us money and you mention that you saw this webcast, um, I'll send you something extra. Oh, very nice. I promise. You know, cool. from my house. That's how much I want this film to be made. I mean, I've never done that. Come to, I've never done that before. <laughs> what are you saying, Eileen? What are you saying, Eileen? <laughs> I don't know. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but really, come help us. You'll be, you'll be, you'll be glad you did. 
and do yeah. mention the podcast, right? Yeah, yeah, without your head, yeah, very good. And Cam, we didn't let them ask any questions. We just went. We well, that's just the best way that goes, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Amazing. I think they were yeah. fine. <laughs> We're not the kind of guests where you say, "Well, tell us about the film." Yeah, okay. then we just let we just let you go. I think this is a, I think five times you've been on the show, and I think it's always you know a similar vibe. We can just let you talk, and that's fun. It was fun. I'm gonna go. All right. Uh, <laughs> I love y'all. Thank One you. Love you, all, See, you Bye. Bye. See you Bye. See you somewhere. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 All right, so we hello, Aline. Oh. We want me want me to kick you out of here, or are you gonna hang up? I can do it. All right, <laughs> thank you. Thank Bye. you. All right, so we're gonna get uh, the headless critic Jason Minton and uh, Seth Heiss on here, and we're gonna talk about Renegade. But a big thanks to Tamara Glenn and Eileen Dietz. Tamara, they were amazing. Tamara rhymes with camera. Tamara, Tamara. 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 Yes, yes. yes. No, that was great. It was it was uh, one was stuck in traffic, one was but it all worked and they they seemed to have a good time. Yeah, it was great. I really enjoyed that. That was the most convinced. I'm gonna give money. That was yeah, great. I am too. I want, a, I want bread to be honest. I'm, I'm <laughs> a big fan of homemade banana bread, no nuts. Uh, I like the nuts, but uh, I'll you go should either. get your own loaf. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. I don't want to share it anyways because I'm a big fan. All right, fair enough. So thank you for being here. It's always fun uh, when you get to join yes. the show. And I know you can't do it all the time, but yeah. I always like it when you can. It's great to be here. I I miss it dearly, dearly. I love doing it. All right. Well, I love having you here. And the yellow reminds me of a movie we watched the other, uh, yesterday. So. Oh, yeah. We did see a lot of yellow in that movie. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So we're going to get these people on. Also, big thanks to Alexi, who uh, set this all up. She's a producer of the film and is really uh, involved in, in getting the word out there, which is good to see. Yeah, this really was, um, you know, I haven't been on much lately, but way back I was on every show. And this was like the most awesome sales pitch <laughs> for an independent film. Yeah, and it seemed like they and it seemed like they really want, want, wanted yes. to do well. Yes. So... <laughs> They're excited about it. I think it's interesting. Like they said, you know, five bucks is not a lot of money. And for something they're so passionate about and clearly cast, crew, everybody involved, this is something that's very meaningful to them. Mm -hmm. So, And uh, also congrats. thanks to Jeff, uh, the director, writer and director who's in the chat room all the time. We got Vic in here, Vanessa Wright from uh, Renegade. Renegade Film Festival, amazing. Which okay, we're about yeah. to talk about very soon. Ken Craver, Darth Vaughn, Pokemon. He asked some questions about uh, Exorcist, but it was early on, so I didn't uh, want to ask. Right, but um, maybe we'll have Eileen back on because it all year is the 50th anniversary of the Exorcist, so that would there. be cool. Uh, and everyone else, I can't name everybody, but thank you everyone for being here. All right, so I think we'll we'll try to get these people on. We'll send them a link. It's a little different here. I can play uh, some music. But I can't just shut us off. So we can't, people will still be able to hear us if we're talking. Well, I could just do this. Oh, you mean if we talk to each other? I was right, going to say, right. I can just put it on mute. But you know what I will do? I'm going to make the tea that I didn't finish making. Okay. Does that sound reasonable? Yeah. I'm going to leave you alone. Can you handle it? I can handle it. All right. You sure? Yeah. All right, cool. All I'll right. I'm going to uh, get these fine people on. And if you were at Renegade after we review it, uh, if 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 we don't take up like hours and hours, uh, we might open the Zoom lines and people can Zoom in and tell us about their uh, their time at Renegade Film Festival. So I'm being very rude. I'm looking at my phone, but I'm sending this Zoom link to Seth and Jason. We're going to talk all about this, but uh, myself, Annabelle, Seth, Jason, uh, this was the first time. We were all together again in six years. Uh, six years ago, we were at uh, Texas Frightmare. And um, this was the first time we were all back together, which was very cool. It was very cool. Very all right. Cool. I'm Let's just, I, you know how tea is. It's a process. It's a process. Yes, yes. I have, a, I, I made tea. I usually drink coffee during the show, but I made tea tonight. What kind of, what kind did you make? It was just English breakfast, but it's good. Ah, the special brand? Uh, Tazo? Is that a T A Z O? I have that as well. Really? It's <laughs> called like English good, breakfast. I recommend it. 
Is it called the week? A week. Yes, that's yeah. the black tea one. Interesting. Then, that's the same exact one I had. This is what I'm making now, and I recommend it to you, Neil. And Tazo should totally sponsor you. It's um juniper mint honey. That does sound very good. Right. And I was like, I don't know about that. But I tried it and it's really weird, but it's really good. Is right. not like a flavor I've had before. And I, I like it. A little bit of honey, nice. Can have honey, no honey, whatever. I haven't had it with any kind of dairy. It's lovely. Okay. Yeah, I've got some uh, fake milk in mine, some almond milk and uh, and some honey. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Big honey guy. Where? Oh, there's one. Yeah, we got one of them here. Now we're just waiting on uh, Mr. Mitten here. <clears throat> I could play uh, the theme song while Mitten's joining us. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Yes, and I'm, I'm digging the hat. Thank you. Mm, in honor of Backwoods Bob. Yeah, Backwoods yeah. Bob. Here. It's not the bad hair day. It's Backwoods Bob. It's Backwoods Bob. You're very Backwoods Beards Incher. I look like, yeah, I look like somebody's uncle. <laughs> oh, bearded incher. I know. Yeah, I think he's using a, a former na- a former name when he normally zooms into, into the show. Oh, or he's just my... a big fan of bearded incher on, on the uh, in your head. I will I will be right back. All right. All right. While while he's getting situated here, I'm going to play our theme song, and then we'll come back here with all of us here. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. But we'll all just stay right here. Well, uh, well, Mr. Mitten and uh, is getting situated, and uh, we're gonna play the theme song. cool theme we switched hats here oh we missed uh joel reed was actually at the very end of that part oh. r.i.p joel reed all right now we're joined by the headless critic look at that look at that he's looking all sexy there as always damn yeah. i didn't get such compliments what you're always sexy though is the thing it's true <laughs> all right we switched hats for the uh I thought this one was appropriate. So uh, let's see here. We're back here at the station of decapitation with Hot Dread. I'm still Nasty Neil. And I am Annabelle Lecter. I'm the headless critic, Jason Mitten. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you know your name, right? Yeah. Where? <laughs> I don't have a nickname, though. 
well, now it's the time. That could be one of our perks. So n- give Seth Ice a nickname. Hell yeah. <laughs> Look at the, oh man, he's got the, uh, he's got the umbrella. So six years ago, we had seen each other uh, for that. At that point was the last time we're all together and all back together again for Renegade Film Fest. And I have to say it was a great experience. I had a a great time seeing everybody again. Uh, The festival was amazing. We're going to talk about it, but a big highlight was seeing everyone again. I you know I see Annabelle a lot, and I, I've seen Mitt a couple times, but everyone together really made it special. Yeah, I couldn't believe it had been that long since we were all together, because it feels like it feels like it was so long ago, but it feels like it was like, yeah, yeah. That's how I feel about you know a lot of things the last few years. When I get really sick and everything, and so some of that seems like just like not that long ago, but also seems almost like another lifetime ago. So it's a very yeah. weird uh, feeling. Yeah, I hadn't seen Seth in like two decades. Yeah, ten and a half years, actually. Hey. Is that Jason or is that the guy that from the movie we watched the other night? <laughs> the the guy hand floated across the screen. Yeah, sure. It would work better if I remembered the man's name, but it was uh he, he, uh, he, he Car- looked like Carter the Irish guy Car- from uh Star Trek Next Generation. Oh, oh okay. O'Brien? Huh? Lieutenant O'Brien? Yeah, Lieutenant O'Brien. I think he becomes Commander O'Brien. But... I've, I've still got 20 years before I become that. Oh, yeah, yeah. When you're older <laughs> and uh, you'll still be g- a ginger and yeah, all these things. So. Yeah, ginger beard. We got uh, Vanessa in the chat. I love the Fiends video you guys made. That was amazing, Seth. Uh, big thank. And uh, I apologize then. Uh, I got very cold and I got a little grumpy for a little bit, uh, but it came out awesome. I loved it. And you were nice and you did apologize and explain yourself later, which I it was very good of you to do and appreciated. I get cold very easy now, and it's very unpleasant when I get cold. So, but uh, that's no, that's still no excuse. But anyway, it came out amazing, and I can't believe you got it done so quick. I started running low on footage after a minute. And so, if you notice, like I cut like a big portion of the song out, and I was like, we're just going to. Short. Oh really? I, I see. Also, well, we as someone tasks. not really familiar with the song, I didn't know. So. We also didn't have six cast members to fill those slots, so I was like, "I'm running out of footage here." I've got a green screen. No, probably wouldn't. Work. Oh, do you want to? You want to do it again? You want to fill in some gaps? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Well, I am waiting for the death metal version of this. I'm just waiting on permission to use the song. Oh, I see. I see. But yeah, that was awesome. And I did not, I know when we were there, you were talking about, oh, maybe next year I'll put this out. And Jason was like, you're not waiting a year to put this <laughs> that out. That was not what I said. <laughs> that is not what I said. All right, fair enough. I said, what if we just didn't get to do it this time? And then next time we're all together, we'll do it. Then be like, oh yeah, this was unreleased. This was filmed a year ago or six years ago or however long it is. That was the conversation. But no, we set up to three o'clock in the morning just to get that footage. Yes. It was. Neil was cold. The sacrifices (laughs) were made. I just need everybody. And you brought all all the props. You brought a couch. You brought a a These props were not easy. These props were not easy to find. Do you know how hard it is to find the classic rubber duck nowadays? You have to go to Amazon and pay a lot of money. Thank you, Jason. You're welcome. I was trying Jason to was the benefactor. It sounds like Jason yeah. was the producer of this show. I, I was a producer, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this baby. finding umbrellas that are the proper colors is also not easy. I found them on Amazon, and I ordered them, and then Amazon was like, huh, just kidding, they won't be here until next Wednesday, which was yesterday. And That's so, crazy. So and- he painted them. Like, we're talking, and he's he was like, I just got acrylic paint and painted them, and then Jason showed up to his apartment to, like, give him a ride yeah these cute pictures and they're both (laughs) yeah i had no idea what was even happening and and 
Jason's like, we're painting umbrellas. And I was like, why? And, <laughs> and then I got no, I got no reply. And I was just like, okay. Like I thought maybe they got into the edibles uh, that they were bringing me or something. No. I paint no. these umbrellas red. I was like, okay. I don't know. Well, I was the neighbors were wondering why we were painting umbrellas too. <laughs> yeah. My neighbor came out and he was like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> and one of the other neighbors, he was like, are you trying to make them less wet? <laughs> and i was like no it was very i went to walmart and they had six exactly six of these red umbrellas and so i was like well can you paint umbrellas and so i googled it was like use acrylic paint and so i got the colors including a red paint um <laughs> and i even like <laughs> i even thought while i was leaving i was like why the fuck did i get red paint to pr- paint these the paint red of- umbrellas <laughs> <laughs> so i was like i can't i'm a dumbass, I'm a dumbass. If, if anybody's wondering we did not paint the red umbrellas red no but <laughs> i considered it i was like well i have the red paint Should i think I that would make it pretty awesome though honestly <laughs> give it a layer of paint yeah. and let me tell you fine folks it is not easy to get five umbrellas to open and sink <laughs> and if you you don't notice but i had to digitally edit some of them to Change really, the I thought yeah, it came. I could look really impressed. good. Yeah, yeah. yeah you were one of the Neil edits. Who you had to edit. Yeah, it was Neil's and Ben's that I edited, so they all went and sank. Mm-hmm. It's very impressive, Mister Heiss. Thank you, thank you. I'm looking behind Jason here. He's got. I see. Uh, is that Cheech's head? It is. Chong's around here somewhere. He's got, um, I believe, Cenobites there drawn by Annabelle. Oh, very cool. Oh, yeah, that's sweet. That's awesome. I see Barbie Wilde's head behind awesome. you. I really like that piece of art. That's very yeah, cool. I see a Jason, uh, what is that, a tiki mug? Uh, yeah, Jason tiki mug, yeah. Now, cool. is the butt hug there? <laughs> yes, it is. It is it? Has not been <laughs> No, I don't even remember how this came up. (laughs) How did this come up? There was I ended up doing a cartoon of Seth and Jason's butts hugging. They thought it was impossible. No, did a good job on capturing my likeness. Thank you for this. (laughs) Jason, a big ass hug. Oh, that's right. And I asked if it was a big ass hug or a big ass hug. Right. It's all due to Neil. (laughs) <laughs> it's has, a group effort it's a group effort yes. that's very proud of his of his butt of his uh yes of his oh. assets. it's he not now help. that i've lost a little weight it's like all my pants are ill-fitted and so you couldn't see it i was looking at some of the pictures of us playing pool and i was like where did it go but thankfully it is not flat the the first thing i saw of any of you three in person was Seth shaking his ass in the hotel in <laughs> dallas and I had no idea who the fuck Jason was when he walked up. It took me a really long time to realize that that was Jason. I think it was around the time we were riding those little animals and somebody said like, hey, Jason or something, or where is Jason or something like that. And I was like, yeah, I didn't he, said, that he was. thought I was the hotel manager that you guys you were dressed so nice. And I was like, oh, maybe they just like made friends with this hotel manager <laughs> coming here before I was wrong. It was Jason. And I was like, oh, because also you had mentioned bringing Jeff. And so I was like, well, I don't think this is him. Well, I know there's people off to the side wondering about like what I love all this. But at the same time, what do we think about this fantastic festival? Well, I oh, think- it was uh, it was a great fe- um. So I've been I've probably been to more festivals that, than a lot of people here, and I personally love. Now I've been to some big ones, which is very cool, especially if you have a movie there. It's cool, but I prefer a, a festival this size where it's on one screen. You have a community feel to it. I could tell there's a lot of people here that that are in the Atlanta area. This is a Marietta, but they're in the Atlanta area, and they come here, you know, every year. I like that. Uh, uh, Buffalo Dreams has the same feel. Boston Underground Fil- Fest- Film Festival, same feel. And South Texas um, Underground Film Festival, same feel. And there's to me, there's something about everyone in the same screen, in the same building, watching the movies together. Uh, you feel you feel more like you're part of a community. And uh, I really like that. And Renegade was a very uh, welcoming community, a welcoming festival. I had a great time. Yeah, it and they picked a, some great uh, shorts. 
it wasn't um like necessarily tiny but it was intimate enough yeah that I, i'd never been to a film festival before so i didn't know i didn't know what to expect i didn't know if we were going to make up most of the crowd i didn't know yeah because like um so uh, <laughs> frightmare is very uh fright fest is very cool in london but it's it's like 12 screens two separate theaters and while that's cool you don't really feel there isn't like oh we're all here together to watch these movies it's like a big multiplex and uh there'd be no way i guess to show all these movies in one screen but it's a different different feel and though it's big i prefer i prefer uh these ones that uh everyone's watching together there's something about that to me i would feel like i was missing out on a lot if there were a lot of other screens to choose from i, I already feel like we missed out on it's how i felt in london yeah like i missed out on a lot yeah i'm not yeah, gonna name names but there is a festival because i don't want to make them feel trash because i love the festival but they did one year decide to split it and me and a couple of the other people that I have known who've been there before were not excited about that because you do, you lose out. And then it's like, you see things that you really want to go see, you know, you can kind of see and read through the description be like, that's when I definitely want to see, but they overlap. And it's just, it's difficult to see the actual content. And then like you're saying with the community aspect, I, I think that that is, definitely missing as well to not have all the responses and reactions all together i mean i don't know i don't know how else would you do it have more days i think it's a tough situation where you've got so much great content do you just yeah. pare it down more and show less do you have longer hours how does that yeah. work out yeah it's probably just uh some just wouldn't be possible but um i always like to say in the show I, I would definitely recommend Renegade for one for people to go to at a great time. And if for some reason, like you're not in the air and you just can't travel that way, look around. There's probably a film festival, at least local to you, you know, that you can make it to and uh, check it out. Cause I think they're great for filmmakers, for fans. And I think really any level you are in, in, in film. Um, that's how, honestly, how I got started in any type of movie, uh, just going there as press and hanging out with everybody and making friends with people and they included me in shorts and then from there you know the features and if you don't even want to do that you can just go and enjoy watching movies but a big part of it is interacting with everyone and uh you know that's how people uh start to, to collaborate so um and everyone's on the same level so like uh, a filmmaker is not going to look down on someone who's just you know quote unquote just a fan or whatever it's uh it's just a great time for everyone to and, and share i'll share the love of independent movies and bring your business cards <laughs> I, yeah, I, should have brought business business cards. <laughs> I need to get this uh what is it the snap card that annabelle sent me the thing for uh dot, dot. the one that i saw is the dot there dot. might be other ones too but it's like a a scannable card thing yeah i need to do this yes but you know, i really loved it i love 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 that the focus is on um diversity and trying to make it so that there's like loads of women filmmakers there's like you know uh lgbtq plus there's a lot of stuff like racially diverse there's a lot going on and so i think some would argue like is this uh like some kind of almost like a gimmick i think that is something that's out there is people thinking oh this is just a thing but no this is something that is a passion of the people involved it's not just something to like bring in certain types of people like this is a real passion to really get people who might not be seen otherwise who might not be respected otherwise who might feel uncomfortable otherwise to put stuff out there there was there was work in there that was really deep into like social uh just dialogue about different social circumstances like the, oh man what's the name the one where this is a three people and they've all been bullied. Mm -hmm. I, don't I don't know. know. It's, 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 here, it's, it's, it's not. It's here. It's not torn apart. It was like torn together, maybe. Oh. Uh, what was it? Torn together, I think it's called. Is she still here? Oh, Vanessa, help! But it was absolutely amazing. It was just uh, dialogue from each of these three different people who've been through uh, terrible experiences of being bullied, and it was amazing how they made it work as a piece of horror film it was you know 
there's some fun, silly stuff, and there's some serious stuff, and it's just the diversity. Yeah, but Vanessa from- says, yeah, it was, it was torn together. Okay. Um, just amazing. There's some really excellent stuff. Um, what do you guys think? You guys also saw movies. They're directed by Melissa Cunup. I hope I pronounced her name right. By the way, I also want to say about the, what you just said there. I always, from my experiences, uh, the uh, independent horror is always ab- ahead of the curve on that. Um, they were the first place I saw people really talking about uh, women filmmakers and and female directors and including um, LGBTQ, all these things. And then, you know, slowly becomes more mainstream. But uh, I think that's uh, really starts the independent horror community really you know, is ahead of all that. Mm -hmm. And I think it, um, I mean, I know it's, it it could be different. Some others, I haven't been to nearly as many festivals, but I definitely felt like the vibe at this one was especially friendly. And I loved it. I really did feel like you were saying earlier, like people weren't like giving you like the hairy eyeball, like you don't belong. I really did feel like everybody was cool they wanted to talk and it was just a different different kind of feel it and the other ones i've been to are, are very cool and no shade at them but i did feel like this one was especially excellent i really enjoyed it it's also a good location a lot of this is important if you're at a festival there's a lot of places you can walk to to go get some neat get coffee yeah. um i've been to places um uh, more so conventions really some festivals of where there's nothing in walking distance. And it really sucks because if you take a trip then to go somewhere, you're gone for hours and then you're going to miss a, a big portion of uh, of the event. Yeah. There was good food. There was good food, yeah. And we all like food. We do like food. Food traveler. Hey, that um, oh, what was the name of the coffee shop we kept going to. Uh, cool, cool beans. Cool beans. Yeah. Great music. Best cheesecake I've ever had. <laughs> it was so good and a very so fine good. oatmeal raisin cookie. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna make we gotta make Jason a, a coffee drinker. Yeah. Pass on that. There's other stuff. There's other <laughs> yeah, stuff. yeah, that's true. That's true. They he liked the chai tea, tea. I think. I did. I did like the chai. Tea. Yeah. Real quick, before I do forget about losing weight in the butt. Is I, 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 it does make you much shorter too. Uh, I've noticed when you're sitting down, as Annabelle had pointed out. Yes. Well, I, you brought it up. I wasn't going to be like, hey, your ass shrank. Yeah. Well, it was shorter, a little but... weirder thing. But, the, but yeah, there's a, but I even see in a dinner and a movie uh, pictures, some of the older ones, I look like I'm like, a, a like giant. a foot taller than Annabelle when we're sitting <laughs> down. But now it's a weird thing but it's all in the butt weight apparently yeah it is yeah. it is i'm i think i'm a little bit taller than i used to be myself you've grown right yes <laughs> yeah i will say i think last time i went for my checkup it was a little bit shorter than i used to be which is it's very weird because honestly i won't even say it's kind of embarrassing but but as i oh. tell people i i like to be a little shorter so because i have a big personality so i don't want to be overbearing uh, you know, overbearing and uh, height wise too, then it would be just too much to deal with. See, I'm the opposite. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> let me overpower everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to ask you, Seth, as someone and Jason, because Jason is, is talking about uh, making something with, with I don't know if, if that's supposed to be out there or not. And Seth, okay. is, uh, you have, uh, you've done some music and worked on some shorts. And so being at a festival and see, and, a couple of things, meeting other uh, creative people and watching things. Is that motivating to, hey, I, I would like to get something finished. So maybe, yeah. you know, I can have something shown here. Yes. Uh, for me, it's always inspiring to be around creative people, just like you guys. Like the first time we were around each other in Dallas, even like I could just feel my creative juices flowing just being around you guys. So. It's very much like that around Renegade because everyone there, or most of the people there, were filmmakers. So. Yeah. Someone also to add to that. Stuff, Neil. <laughs> Just yes, yeah. But I, well, I, like you said, though, honestly, uh, becoming friends with Annabelle has been very uh, motivating for me to to do a lot a lot more stuff. I mean, it was always doing goofy stuff, but, it, you know, when you have someone you can bounce a silly I- or cool ideas, ad- ideas in general off of, it's uh, it's a good experience. That's how we became friends, basically, is because I was like, I have an idea, and I know y'all are critical, thoughts and <laughs> opinions, and then it just grew from there. 
Well, yeah. we started to be friends because I asked you to help me with uh, the Baron from Dune Facebook creeper. Yeah, he was, well, it wasn't that you asked me, but it was that I commented. He said something real weird and I was coming, I was like, what? <laughs> and she messaged me and she goes, he's weird. <laughs> and so he was like saying weird oh. things. And I was like, no, take me instead. <laughs> Some guy impersonating the Baron from Dune saying all this crazy stuff about <laughs> spice. <laughs> And I was so that just, led to a beautiful French. Yeah, yeah. That, le- that led to Jason dropping that character and just being himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was. I wonder whatever happened to him. Who was it? <laughs> uh, Vanessa no, here. She. Fine. Oh, sorry to interrupt. Amy. Vanessa says my favorite thing to see is when filmmakers and screenwriters meet for the first time at Renegade and then collaborate and come back with a project they made together. Yeah, I even talked to that uh, with Vanessa there, and she was talking about uh, our, the, own, the Without Your Head one, um, Severed Limbs, and there's a lot of people at Severed Limbs. There's a wide ride, but there's a lot of really, um, I don't want to say low budget, p- inexperienced people, and that and she was saying that's a good thing, you know, because maybe some of the stuff we showed Severed Limbs wouldn't, um, Maybe not even being accepted somewhere else. Maybe they wouldn't even think to to uh, you know send it into a, to a different film festival. So I know myself that's very uh, it's a cool uh, experience for me, and I'm glad to see that from her. It's very intimidating. Uh, the like, me, I've I'm creative. Like, not pat myself on the back. I'm a creative person, and but it's very intimidating. So being at a festival like this and having people excited and playful and enthusiastic and so supportive and you know I was encouraged I won't name drop but I was encouraged to like reach out and work with someone who wants to literally help me make something and that's I'm it's just amazing to me that the people there there are people who really do want they want you to succeed and that's awesome it's just awesome and I bet this person doesn't realize the extent of your creativity because they've been it, around for a while. Okay. I won't name, I don't know if they want their name named, but in the future, if they're cool with name name. But even I'll like we'll be on the phone and bounce ideas off each other. We have a Google Docs mm-hmm. that we use and we're always like writing stuff down. I can't wait until we both get murdered and somebody comes back and finds this and it's like, Jesus, <laughs> what was wrong with them? <laughs> because there's some good stuff in there. Jason was just telling me the same thing. He couldn't wait till you two get murdered. But he yeah. didn't add that other part. But he was going to do it. We were oh, waiting. Oh, oh, yeah. I mean, we got to find the Google Doc. Right? Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, we were like, he's going to poison the deviled eggs. <laughs> yeah, we never did get the deviled eggs. But that, it now it that. gives us a reason to meet up again. Deviled eggs and he's kept on the black olive soda that I didn't get to drink. That's true. If it's not expired, we will drink it. <laughs> now, it occurs to me, as it may have occurred to the rest of you, is why we would not do some... I know we live apart. Like, that's real. But do something together. Even if it's really short and we meet up for like a short amount of time and just boom, the bomb, get it out. We said that that friends, fiends, and that was. I'm yeah. down. Yeah, it only took all night. <laughs> yeah. yeah, one night though to make something that's cool. We can, we can make a short in a couple of days, film it, then, you know, someone sure edit it when we get back. We'll bring a, a nice coat and a hot chocolate for Neil. Yeah, exactly. Some hand warmer. Or we can go somewhere warm. Maybe. We'd film it in the summer. You no, know. fuck the summer. <laughs> fuck the mosquitoes. But... Yeah. Don't talk to me about mosquitoes right now. <laughs> Vanessa says, turn that intim- intimidation to inspiration. Mm-hmm. And I can't wait to see what you create, Annabelle. Oh. And uh, oh. yes, you could totally make a film in different places as well. Mm. That's true. So what's our film going to be about? Let's tell it to everybody. <laughs> oh, it's kind of weird. So <laughs> I can't even imagine. The intimidation part also is because this happened. So now I'm like learning about script writing and there's some really like intense rule. I'm, I'm thinking because the thing I'm thinking of doesn't have dialogue. And then I'm learning about how you're not supposed to put in certain things into your script. Like you're not supposed to put in camera directions and everything i'm like I really don't i don't i don't think that's always true though <laughs> honestly i submitted a short film script 
to a festival that did not win, but I did get some feedback. And that was a big thing is about that. I was basically directing in the script and I still do it. <laughs> I still do it. You yeah. can imagine it. You know, well, I, I guess there's like, so does. I don't, what's that, Jason? I can confirm he does still do it. I've seen some of his stuff. I do it. So what I learned is that there are two, I can't remember because my memory is not great. Um, that there are two kinds of scripts you write. You write the one that you submit that is supposed to be like boom, boom, boom. So people like, they either like it or they don't. They don't want to spend a lot of time like dreaming up whatever you describe. They just want to see it, whatever. And then there's the other script that has all of that. Here's what I, here's my vision. But trying to put, here's my vision that has no dialogue <laughs> to a script. But I will get some uh, coaching on that very excited if you if you plan on directing i think it's fine you know when i did my short film a couple years ago <laughs> the script was full with camera movements and lighting and all that but i was directing it so i didn't think it mattered yes it and was you're, for in, you're a producer too so you didn't have to like worry about funding stuff so we'll see but back to the festival what are some of the standout movies for you guys Victim number six. Oh, I loved it. So good. I loved it. I just watched an interview with the makers of that last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah, from like a year ago. Um, I think, I forget what film festival they were going to, but I believe the woman who played the lead in that, she was not, she didn't run that festival, but she was like, I forget what the word is, like a, what's what do you call it she's on the board i don't know what the proper term is yeah but the, i i loved it i loved it and i love their song choices i like the camera work i liked all of it that was that was my favorite one besides the ones in future smash and i i see a bob has inspired you too this is a backwards bob character yeah <laughs> who doesn't want to run, run around looking like somebody's uncle <laughs> what'd you guys think about uh victim number six i thought it was great there was it, I, it was funny because now i have two matchbooks of uh victim number six from two different uh festivals oh. and i still had it in my in my luggage when we were there at renegade oh really yeah so like, and it had the back it said nightmares ohio and now i have one from uh from renegade i wish i had got one yeah, no. I'll, well, I'll send you one if you want. I have two now. Yeah, give it. No, I'll bring it along <laughs> next time we meet up. I don't know. I can assume you could send matches in the mail, but who knows? Mail's weird. No, I've sent some weird things in the mail. <laughs> I can send candles in the mail. I don't know why it would be a problem. Yeah, your thoughts, Jason. On um, victim number six, it was excellent. I loved it. Um, won a lot of awards and deserved them. Yeah, and the woman was sitting right in front of us the whole time. And I had no I, idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah she was sitting, when the awards were happening, she was sitting right in front of us. And so, like, yeah. every time they would call that one out, we'd be like, woo! I knew she was cool because outside of the theater, there was, like, music happening in the place next door and her. And I don't remember the name of the guy she was with, but it was another film dude. And they were, like, dancing on the sidewalk. <laughs> and I'm like, these people are good. These are yeah. Good. Yeah, she was lovely. Yeah. Her name was Heather. I cannot remember her last name, but I believe her name was Heather. Mm. Believe it. Let me see if I've got it. Maybe. Um, I love the costuming, too. Yeah, I love Chicks. Chicks, I thought Chicks was a great um, short. <laughs> Chicks was I've been great. thinking of, I've been, that's the one that I've been describing to people. Mm-hmm. and they're like what film festival did you go to <laughs> because describing it is much different than watching it yeah what it's really I'm something off. you have to I th- there are things like if you try to describe people just think that sounds like you know like you're insane or something but uh yeah it's something you'd have to watch i think to also it's not it, most things at festivals aren't necessarily going to be for everybody either yeah. Yeah. I was describing it to justice and she was like, now this was a dream you had. And I was like, no, we watched it. <laughs> yeah. I like that one. Uh, crazy. Cause that one I, is like, it does have moments in it that are act like truly crazy. Like I didn't even know if I was supposed to laugh or if I was supposed to with the birds. Yeah. 
people. I, I don't know really really what I'm supposed to be feeling, <laughs> but it was really funny. I like they, they just really went for balance. it. You know? Yeah. They struck a good balance with it, with having it be like really funny, but also really fucking creepy. Yeah. And meaningful. Like there was meaning behind all of it. And I, yeah. I think it was interesting that they could have all those elements going on. Cause a lot of times if you've got that kind of level of silly comedy, then you're not, especially that would all like culminated at the same time. Yeah. It was really cool. Uh, something about victim six too. Uh, I think Annabelle and I talked about this uh, yesterday or something was it really feels like something of that. Sometimes something is made to look sort of like a period piece and, and it's like, you could tell they intentionally did so where this felt like genuine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it also felt modern at the same time. Like if you watch this, it's not going to age poorly. Right. And that's something that's something about doing period pieces that I do like is that as soon as I hold up this phone in a movie, in a year it's going to be dated it's mm -hmm. like when you watch scream and you see drew barrymore with the big giant phone <laughs> talking to the yeah. killer it does kind of take you out of it even though the rest of the movie looks pretty and feels pretty modern mm -hmm. i want to get one i want to get a big giant cell phone are you, gonna like this idea. are you gonna walk around and talk on it <laughs> yeah with a big like yeah, an antenna on it and stuff yeah hold on i'm getting a call <laughs> <laughs> it would entertain me but then at the same time i'd have to walk around with it which would be annoying yeah like where do you put it <laughs> yeah i, I can't stick it in my back pocket time, leave it in their car like a normal human being <laughs> uh kickstart my heart was cool kind of it's very different than umbilicus but it kind of re it it kind of gave me that uh connection where it was someone made something creative out of um, out of a bad situation. Mm -hmm. So I like that. I was a big fan of that one. But uh, overall, really, um, I could sometimes. I mean, I always like shorts, but I, I think uh, the people who run Renegade really uh, thought through these and picked uh, all all really good short films. Yeah, and none of them overstayed their welcome. <laughs> which was nice because, you know, some short films can tend to go on. Yeah, it's a short film. It doesn't, you know, a 40-minute film doesn't, where does that really fit? It's not quite long enough to be a feature and you don't, it doesn't. So when you're watching the short films, if there happens to be one you're not really into, you know, in maybe 10, 15 minutes the max, you're going to get to a next one. So it flows nice and you can watch a whole bunch of different things together. And I like those blocks, but yeah, if you have a couple in there that are very long, I mean, I've seen some that are good, but it just feels weird uh, connected with all the other shorts. I think yeah. it's tough because there are sometimes, I think there are films that are worthy of that time, but really couldn't be stretched. It's like if you could take a short film and you try to stretch it, and you could also take like that 40 mil and try to stretch it into like an hour and a half. Right. Yeah. So if you have a 40 that, minute story, what do you do with works. it? Yes. So I think it's tough because people do have that expectation and it's less than this or more than this. And then there's this gap where maybe there are a lot of things could exist. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I don't know if these shorts didn't run as long in the blocks or if they're just so good it didn't feel as long, but they they really didn't go on. I feel like they went on forever. Sometimes I feel like they just go on forever, just tons of shorts, and I didn't get that feeling at any date at all. Yeah. Yeah, they were all paced well. I agree. Any other standouts? I will have to admit we did uh, miss Moonlight Sonata with Scissors. Unfortunately, uh, we missed one short at that block, and it was it was Moonlight Sonata. So uh, sorry, Chris. I cannot think of what it was called off the top of my head, but how do I describe this? It was like a 1950s. Like she's working as a mortician, and what was? Oh that? yeah, uh, that, I love that one too. That's one of my. Is favorites. it Violet? Violet Butterfield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. had like a crazy long name. Yes. But yes, I see like, that here. Violet, Violet Butterfield, Butterfield uh, cos cosmetician to the. Uh, I see it. Yeah. Violet I Butterfield, think, makeup artist for the dead. I felt like that yeah. almost could be like a, a video series, like a you know, like a 10, 15 minute ongoing like YouTube series. Like that each episode is about someone coming to you know. Yeah, it would be cool for her to be like a host. Yeah, and uh, almost like she's yeah, like and they a, could tell their story. 
yeah, like a late night TV host kind of, I'm not saying that they should switch her character out, but have that kind of like, here's a person, here's their short. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Oh, I give, yeah, I think so too. Yeah, like yeah. How, how, the, how they got to be an undead or whatever, yeah. And but that idea. was a really just the, then now when they explained how they sort of got the idea, which I, you know, I didn't even think about the Bruce Willis character from um, from Death Becomes Her. But it, it's much different than that, though, is I thought it was very, uh, very cool, uh, very original. And uh, and it looked great. It was very stylized, which I like. Yeah. And the acting was really good and it was entertaining. It was well written. Yeah. And I, at the beginning, I wasn't exactly sure what was happening, which is always good. Yeah. Yeah. And then it was like a slow reveal. And I was like, this woman, <laughs> is, her makeup skills are very good. She's very <laughs> talented. And then as it went on, it was explained. And I was like, oh, this is cool. Uh, Vanessa, huge <laughs> thanks to the 30 film judges we have. Also, uh, Annabelle, get in touch with me about your script. I have a lot with very little dialogue. Yay! Thank you. It's awesome. Which, by the way, uh, Vanessa's um, short um, Jeff had mentioned that was one of his uh, favorites at uh, at Severed Limbs was um, the silent one that she that we played for. Uh, she's we've had several of hers and they're all very fun. I'm very bad remembering names. I will say that. I'm not there for all of them. I don't know if I saw it, but I would love to. <laughs> Uh, Vic Shavoni says, one of my favorite memories of Renegade will be that Seth actually remembered the rat story. <laughs> there is no forgetting that story. There's not. That was like years ago he told that. And I was like, what the fuck? So now you have to share it. Because yeah, everybody's like, story? what the hell are you talking about? So Vic had called in and told us the story about how I think they made brownies and they were like, these taste like shit. <laughs> and, so um, I'm going to just back up for a second. So Vic Schiavone is a loyal follower of Neil's project. So his wrestling podcast and his horror podcast, here we are, um, interacted with the show for years and years and years and years. Seth has also been a co-host in the past. And one day, I don't know if he wrote in but like Vic's a family man he's got this giant family he's like got a relatively normal life compared to a lot of us I think and so he was just talking about his world making brownies there we go and I guess I don't know exactly how this played out but I would love to see I would love to be able to go into a time machine and watch how this unfolded but my understanding is that they ate these brownies and everybody was like, these taste like shit. What is this? And they looked at the vegetable oil, the container. I, in my head, it's like a big container. And there's a fucking dead rat floating in it. I don't know how... I need explanations for how you don't notice this. <laughs> using it, how you don't notice that there's a fucking dead rat like in the thing. You did, like, were there flakes coming out into the brownies? Like, into the batter? I need to know more details about this. And that could be its I, own short. Yeah. I was just thinking the exact same thing. This could, yeah, this could be our short. The, the, yes. the rat. <laughs> There's give us rat the, in the oil. We will make it. And he's like, "Oh, you remembered that? How could I not?" <laughs> I saw his face, and I was like, "Ah, a rat eater." <laughs> it wasn't even a rat; it was rat juices. That's gross. <laughs> They're like yeah. pulling out little pieces of hair. We've got to think, like <laughs> you know, if you put like uh, er fresh herbs and stuff in oil, and and you know, it really brings out it brings all the flavor. Yeah, so it was rat infused oh, oil. It was rat infused brownies. <laughs> There's something I don't know what. It, I feel ill from this. I don't know what it is about, like, the fact that it's brownies. Like, if he had said he was making garlic bread from scratch, I feel like that would have got a little bit less. <laughs> but something about chocolate rat is really... <laughs> that I, I will never... be the next soda that Jason buys me. Yeah, <laughs> we'll try it on the show. Yeah, I, I, well, I am... There is something Jason once bought me that I've never tried. That's I just, true. I just have, I just couldn't bring myself to try it. It's oh. very expensive too. 
Now I feel really bad. Well, actually, there's the, two things. That's sarcasm I, I also have or reality? Here, but... The uh, he so he bought me the I forget the name of it. It's it's like this poop coffee. So these, oh, these... is it like the beans go through an animal? Yeah, that it's... is very expensive. I've read about this. So... It's like wombats or something like that. <laughs> Where did you find it? <laughs> he made. I heard about stuff. it. I've ordered it special for new. What did you? look up to find this like how did you find out about did you just google oh i'm gonna look up something gross to <laughs> and it's like excrement in a drink well it's a thing that people know about people who just know that these animals eat coffee beans they go and find the coffee beans and it's a very expensive coffee i didn't know the name of the animal i had to look up what animal eats and poop down coffee beans <laughs> <laughs> but I found it, and from there I was able to purchase it. But I didn't ask how people found out about this. I asked, "How did you find out about this?" <laughs> Knowledge, I know. I don't know where I found this out. It's a fetish, it's like a <laughs> decade-old knowledge. I just know. I don't know. You also didn't bring the tequila with the worm, which I was thankful for mm. because you wouldn't let me. I, it's not that I wouldn't let you. I just said that I was not going to participate. <laughs> Vanessa says it's supposed to be phenomenal, the poop coffee. It is. That's why it's so expensive. Yeah, drink That's up. it. Bruce, Bruce's ghost knows in here. It's from the Cavette. I don't know how you say that. C-I-V-E-T. I don't know. Sounds similar to a wombat. I, I do well, want to know the it. origin of it. Who Who was out there watching this animal in the woods? And the, not only do they see him poop, they go through the poop. Oh, look at all these coffee beans! Then they started picking out all the beans and brought it home. And like, I, I'm gonna, I bet this is some fine ass coffee. You know what? It was probably a joke. They're probably like, I'm gonna so screw with my friend. And then the friend's like, This is the best coffee I've ever had. Kind of like the help when she ate the pie. She's like, What is the ingredients in this? And she's like, Shit. <laughs> these. Cavet things. I don't even what know. What is this called? Well, how do you spell this? C I V E T. I. They look very scary. Oh, yeah. Who's dude. like, man? I really got to drink some coffee made out of the beans out of their poop. It looks oh, like so, a it's horrible. It's like a raccoon monster. Its tail <laughs> is crazy. So it, if we go to Buff and I bring this, w w will you drink some, Annabelle? If we make it in the in the Airbnb. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, I would rather try this than the um, old testicles that you ate. <laughs> I think well, I guess true. it is true. I did eat. Uh, yeah, I, I did want to point testicles. out that was not a confirmation. <laughs> that was a <laughs> question. Civet, uh, Bruce says. Thank you, Bruce. It's cute. Civet. Yeah, I, I, I just for anyone out there. I mean, I. People love uh, bull testicles, you know, the Rocky Mountain oysters. I was not a fan. It's really the consistency that is what threw me off. They, when you put them in your mouth and you bite into them, they, it's like a uh, damp sawdust. Oh, that's gross. That's, and then like you start to think what they are and you're like, no, they were I'm kind of glad right? I didn't love them because then, like, if you loved them though, then it's like, man, well, I gotta go get some bull testicles, you know, like you'd be <laughs> craving be them all. <laughs> Maybe you're just not admitting it now. Before we went, I looked it up and I saw like the cross section of it. Nope. <laughs> Off the list. That is one weird food I will not be trying on this adventure. <laughs> Unfortunately, we uh we don't even have the video of it. Oh. when i ate it we we so the backstory here it was uh it was at um bazaar ac in atlantic city atlantic. that was a great convention it was too bad it didn't last longer yeah. and uh they had a, a thing was called bazaar bites and it was like a local like famous you know sort of famous uh chef there and they they like so you it was like in this restaurant and, and like at the top of the the casino very fancy. and and so it was kind of like it was kind of fancy, really. Mm -hmm. And so they had all these, they had tongue and they had the bull testicles, and they had all this stuff. And the chef was there explaining what y'all had. And so Anna and I were sitting Nick, at seated at a table with these two other people. And I picked them up and start I started to teabag them while Annabelle was filming filming me. And the people sitting there was just kind of like looked at us like they know, loved us. Know. They gave us a book. <laughs> oh, that's they great. They didn't get up, on how to behave and why. <laughs> 
they were great oh man i feel <laughs> terrible i can't remember the names but they were wonderful i would love to see them again so you said this was a fancy restaurant it was, it was yeah it was a special theme for the event so for the convention they had this all this crazy body like body parts you don't usually oh look how cute he is Isn't he so cute he's got like a little mohawk on his on his butt it, yeah, no, it's very it, cute. I look it, at him and think, so cute. Man. I can't wait to drink its shit. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like an otter, but like a demonized version. Oh, wow. they look really small. This one. Is it? <laughs> Douglas Vance Castagna. Author oh, yeah. Rafaela Castagna. They were they were really wonderful. They're still apparently they're both still friends with me, so that's cool. I haven't lost them in the shuffle. <laughs> oh, look at that little guy. Yeah. He does not look like he is the real deal. Yeah, maybe he's a baby. See yeah. that one? I think <laughs> looks. Cute. But yeah, like, that one. That one you can understand eating their shit. I don't know about all that, but. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you wash. I guess they're washed. I think the the theory is like oh, they, they know how to pick out like the best coffee beans or something. But, I uh, well, I think that surely now do they roast it after? Because I'm thinking mm, that's probably takes they must because yeah. it goes through the stomach. Well, I'm wondering because it goes through the stomach. Is that take that's place? the roasting, roasting <laughs> that's process? The... Yeah, because going through stomach acid. <laughs> roasting all... through stomach acid. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so curious. I'm not necessarily I... curious to drink it. Where is that olive beverage? Uh, it's here somewhere. I brought oh. it back with me. I was gonna, I was gonna say, Neil, you should just drink it now. I can't. It's Another with Jason. You I'm gonna take it. I just... Well, no, I thought it was cool. It gave us a, uh, you know, we can uh, next time we're all together. It'll, uh, mm-hmm. you'll bring. You have to just bring it with you every time. M- maybe in June, right? Maybe. Yeah. yeah. What's in awesome. June? I don't know. What Is that the June. Buffalo? Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Oh, no, Smash is playing in Seth's hometown. I like oh. this idea. Vanessa says you need to do a live without your head where everyone brings weird things to eat, drink, and then uh, give you like our own bizarre bites. Yeah. Back in uh, the olden days, we used to do spit or swallow, nips oh. tasting with uh, Neil's brother, Troy. That was very fun. Yeah. Neil we could do a similar sober, thing. It could sober. be food. Yeah. What's Each up? Us, we could do a similar thing now, but we could all bring some type of food and do it. Yeah. Yes. I just want to point out that Neil drank Neil drank nips with you for years and nothing. He drank nips with me once and he quit alcohol. (laughs) Yeah, we used to be quite a drinking buddies, really. Now I'm drinking tea. Wasn't always the case. Water. I've got a tea and uh, some water, but it's got some kind of weird stuff in it that uh, for hydration. I've got. Gatorade around here, but I don't know what I did with it. It was you just, fed you fed uh, it to your animal to drink after their after it goes through them. Boy, my animals are all dead now. <laughs> well, that's a really weird thing you're into, but you know. Am I, I hear like a beep? Is that like a microwave or something? I don't know. Oh, it's awful. I don't know who's end that's on. I don't know. There's nothing going on here. Uh, Bruce says, I like drinking things passed through animals. My dog swallowed an RC cola once, and I believe it tasted better. Then he had uh, just kidding. That is coming <laughs> from Annabelle Lecter's side. Did your, oh, uh, yeah. we can't hear you. I think your microphone might have come unplugged or something. Oh, yeah, we can't hear you. <laughs> ah! <laughs> hello, hello. Yeah, I do have an idea. We're getting back to Renegade, but I do have an idea for uh, for a video series where it would be uh, the new coffee. And so, because some at some point, someone had to think, I'm taking these co- these beans, I'm gonna roast them, I'm gonna dry them, I'm gonna grind them up, soak them in water, and drink it. Whoever thought of this? It sounds like crazy. So maybe you could do it with other food. So I'm going to try different foods every episode and see if I can find the new coffee. Can you hear me? Yes. Now we Sorry can I said hello like a million times. I thought I put it on mute to test my mic. Oh, okay. Put it on mute. 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 Oh, let me see. 
I'm looking over the list of films to jog my memory here. Boo Hag was cool. I like that. Yeah, that, that was one very, was very funny. Nice. Yeah, that was like that one. There was that, a lot of cool monsters in a lot of these. That one had, had cool monsters. Yes. Um, let's see. Good I taste was good. Out. Uh, I had a terrible migraine. I had to leave the theater. And, um, but I did end up witnessing a crazy man outside the theater protesting with his like, you know, handmade signs yelling about men being men and the only reason women have women have abortions is because men don't step up to the plate yeah and that was crazy because we had went out like not long i didn't go out that long after you and you're texting me there's some weird guy outside and i was like i'm literally out here witnessing this and so i went up to vanessa and a couple other people and i was like hey i'm nosy what the fuck and he was saying he was saying shit about how women need to keep their legs closed meanwhile he has one leg and i felt like that just added to it <laughs> and, then, and then when the police were there and me jason and annabelle are all outside he just <laughs> goes eight o'clock p.m at eight o'clock p.m and then he like didn't say anything and i was like this is a bomb threat <laughs> we're about to get shot up yeah, it was pretty wild. I walked, I, at first he just seemed like some lame dude who was just outside and there were no police. And I walked away to try to like calm my brain down and just circumstantially walked by some just cop doing his stroll. And then I started heading back and I could hear him and moviegoers yelling. And I was like, oh, this, <laughs> this is concerning. I think that's probably i went back inside at one point i was like telling jason like during the middle of this one movie i was like uh this just happened and then we heard all this commotion and he was like it's because of that i was like well i don't know i'm sitting in here <laughs> and then after that that's when we went back outside and he started screaming at eight o'clock and it was like 7 15 or something and we were like it's not eight o'clock yet what's coming at eight o'clock yeah so if people don't know he's protesting the movie give me an a which is um, a pro-choice film. It's you know, it was made. Um, I know. I think they made it before they overturned uh, Roe versus Wade, and then I think it, uh, I think their our premiere was right around the same time we saw the premiere in L.A. And um, so yeah, and it, I mean, it was a it was a protest of one guy, which you know was kind of uh, took away like the the power of that that protest, but still like. I wondered how he found out about it, but I think someone said like uh, I think that I think someone was on TV uh, promoting that might have been Vanessa promoting Renegade, and I think that's how he heard about it. And then he bought a um, he actually got his permit and stuff to do the protest. That's so crazy. I still have theories about it. Jeff had theories about it. Yeah, and then the more I talked to Ava Davis, I believe was her name, who was in that and torn together. Mm -hmm. and i was like our friend has a theory and she was like hmm because saying it all out loud at once i was like huh <laughs> i think it's plausible and i think i want to know who was in charge of that if that was the case that's really vague <laughs> so basically what the there is a, a theory that this guy was um, like a like a, a stunt, yes. like he was some kind of stunt to draw in people, which I don't know if that would be effective or not. I don't know. I would not want to. I didn't want to be around the crazy man, but <clears throat> but I do think it says a lot that if this guy was actually like a legitimate, and if he got the permit, I mean, how powerful this topic was, and this came up in the interview with. Um, Tamara and Eileen, like this, this stuff that's going on right now is very, very powerful and very meaningful. So it's important to have people making this kind of film, even if it's gonna, I mean, it's just is gonna draw hate from some people. And yeah, can you do, you can't just stop making these things because there's some random scary dude. No, yeah. I mean, that would be letting, you know, like the bully or, you know, somebody win. Yeah, I, I am sure these people did not make this thing. They weren't going to ruffle somebody's feathers. And even if he was not 
planted by the makers of this he was out there screaming the name of the thing like you're just getting the word out there even more about it you have to know that i would be willing to bet that somebody at least one person was like i now want to see this <laughs> and see what it's about i want to see it yeah if, if i had known about it and i just heard that guy out there it would have made me go see it mm -hmm. yeah so either way good for the filmmakers I'm just uh, sad none of the none of the uh, people from the theater actually got. I was worried that some there would be like an altercation because I know there are people in that crowd who are not messing around. Like yeah. I know there's people in there. Well, the, that cop that was walking around ended up being there when I got back, and he was with apparently his wife and his child. They were just hanging out while he was doing his cop leave. They were cool. They were really cool, and I was saying with the woman, like I, if I was him, I wouldn't screw with these people because I know there are, are women in here that would destroy him. <laughs> there are going to be some serious beatdowns going on. <laughs> yeah, I thought the uh, lead in Stag was was a great actor. She was wonderful. I really liked her. But I was saying to Seth, like I, I whispered over to him that she is like the carbon copy of one of my coworkers that I adore. Like accent, appearance, personality. I'm like, this is Amy Sislowski. Totally. So, so I was very fond of her. I stand correct. It was made right after overturning uh, Road vs. Wade. Yeah, that movie, Stag, had some really good music. There was one piece in particular that the whole, it was a pretty long scene in the middle of the movie. And Annabelle and I kept whispering over to each other, oh my God, this music is great. And so then I had to look up the composers and I found that piece of music on their oh, website really? and now i can't stop hearing it even doing vandalistic things i was thinking about that and like oh, that's cool. the composer he always hears the music he's always making music mm -hmm. and a big shout out to uh the winner of, of best score at renegade catherine Kapatsi, uh for end zone two which maybe I shouldn't yeah. say that name, but yeah, great. Uh, just an amazing, the music in it is awesome. I heard, I heard uh, as you know, part of the movie, I heard some of the music before seeing even the work print of end zone two. And uh, I was like, Oh yeah, this is perfect for what, we're, what we were going for. There's nothing like making a movie and having somebody else do the music and then getting it back and being happy with it. In my mind, there's hardly a better feeling. Yeah, it was, it's it's uh, great. And I was so happy for her. She's uh, obviously, you know, it's my movie and stuff, but uh, she's such a cool person and so talented. I was really happy for her to, to win best score. Yeah. Anybody and I was happy for us to win Indie Spirit Award, but yeah. That's very cool. I was just going to add in for Catherine. She is, is a very, very talented musician all around. And uh, I know she has a band that plays in the Boston area called Fo Menko. Fo as in fake F-A-U-X Menko M-E-N-C-O. One word F-A-U-X M-E-N-C-O. And they play at the square root. Uh, square root in Boston on every other Sunday, I believe. So if you're curious about her, Check her out. Go to Fomenko. Um, it's very cool uh, traditional guitar stuff that surely has a better way of being described. I'm not a musician. So <laughs> that's what we get. Fancy guitar stuff. <clears throat> yeah, I for, first met her at, at Buff, actually. I think it was the year we made Umbilicus Desidero. Oh, there you go. Yeah, um... Might have even been the year before, because I think I might have still been drinking. So it might have been the year before. Wow. Um, yeah, I remember two two years back to back buff. Just real quick, the the uh, I was with Michael Sophia both years. So the one year I was still drinking, and I did um, karaoke, and I thought I sang uh, Monster Mash, and I was like, God damn, that was great! Everyone's like, that was awesome. They put the clip up on on uh, on Instagram. The next year, I sang the same th same song. I was completely sober, and I was like, God damn, that sucked. Everyone else had the same reaction from last week. That was awesome. And then I realized, oh, 
sober karaoke karaoke is is i have to admit it's not a good time but Aww. but uh, but i'll uh, you know it's this one nugget here i did consider i have a karaoke machine that my aunt gave me for christmas one year and i could not find it but i was going to bring it at least oh, that'd be fun. perform in the airbnb <laughs> what's your go-to karaoke song there's so many i've been informed by seth that i should never sing in front of anyone why that's what karaoke is all about i i did not know this you know what he said he said well you can bring it but i won't participate and i, never said like, I think that's for the best because i've heard you sing that's no, cool. i bet he's a good singer karaoke is about fun not talent well, it's not about talent so yeah i, yeah, I could see mitten belting out some like some old school yeah, country tunes or hater. something. <laughs> don't listen to country music. <laughs> some yeah, he gets out like the banjo. I don't know, singing some like some hillbilly tunes, <laughs> some bluegrass or something. The only song that I would sing. <laughs> He's like, "Can I do dueling banjos here in this here karaoke?" I love what it. Is, what does it smell like it. right now? <laughs> what? Jason, what does it smell like in here right now? <laughs> what? And your house probably stink bugs. I don't know. <laughs> no. What was the thing that you were gonna say? Oh, northerners. <laughs> what do northerners smell like other than Dunkin' Donuts? I have no idea. I just thought it was fun. Trash humor <laughs> and insults of the South regions. Well, I mean, it's not hard. <laughs> Oh, no, I looked at my notes because I have, again, terrible memory. Uh, it was whoop, sideways. What the hell? By the way, uh, Vanessa hey. says, you guys are amazing. Looking forward to seeing you all again soon. I've got to get uh, up early and hit the hay. I will uh, share this all over the socials. Well, thank you, Vanessa. Thank you. It's she so great to meet you. She was very cool. I think I, I, told, I think I told her, I was like, I'm coming back to the next one. <laughs> I told Mike that I was going to bring her. No, oh, very cool. It would be fun for us to get back there. It would be you awesome. Would Good taste was one of the ones that mm. really stood out for me. With the, yeah, well, I thought about that. The couple, couple. Yeah, it was a couple and uh, another woman who was like, it seemed like it was her first time in a threesome and it was very passionate and there's oh, this person's not good enough. Oh, maybe they are. And there was like a weird comment from the man about her not being the right kind of Asian, which was really like, what is that all about? And it turned into, like, I don't know how much spoiler there is, but there's cannibal things involved. And it was it was great. And she was tough. And I loved it. I thought it was very, very good. And there, yeah, that was really another good. one where the acting was really good. Really good. And film very professionally. A lot of these yeah. uh, look, you know, um, like they could be, you know, a feature film. They, they looked really yeah. good. Yes, definitely. Um, I don't know if anyone has a list of the films, and I, I probably don't know the yeah. name. But in the uh, first block, there was one called like Fish Girl or something, which I know you guys were a little bit late for. But I missed it was those kind of ones I didn't get to see because I had my overwhelming yeah. pain headache. I just sent. If you look at the chat, I just sent um, the list. Okay. Anyway, it was fantastic. I believe it's from Scotland or Ireland, mostly silent film, but. Um, if you're working on something solid, you may check it out. The fish wife. It. fish wife. Fish wife. Now, is that the one with the person regurgitating? No, no, no. Okay. No. What um, happens with, what's a little premise of fish wife? It's hard to say without giving it away, but um, pretty much a, a lady in probably the 1600s, somewhere through there, it's a period piece, uh, gets impregnated by... A man who comes from the sea. Mm. And that it, it is hard to, to talk too much about uh, shorts and not, you know, yeah. give away because yeah. um, a lot of times shorts are kind of like a, not I wouldn't say a punchline like it's like a joke, mm -hmm. but you know, it's it's like you know one uh, one you know that's the end and it's kind of the deal. Yeah, kind of like a humanoid's from the deep. Hmm. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Is it really kind of interesting? N mm. it, there's fish people, kind of thing. <laughs> There I'm are. a big fan <laughs> of humanoids from the deep. I know. 
I thought you were a big I fan of fish people. I like any kind. I like any movie where there's a lot of. Uh, never mind. <laughs> make me sound weird here, but there's. I'll make own my own list someday. My sexiest scenes in films. I just want to say it's I'm as I'm looking at myself in the camera, it looks like I'm over here like playing with my crotch. <laughs> well, I mean, Jason's on video here. He's a very handsome man. Yeah, that's a reason for me not to. <laughs> Did not cross my mind. Just Good. <laughs> my mind I'm over here. I loved these movies. <laughs> I don't Jason's like the you. feeling is mutual. No, it's not. It's always like I'll say something flirty to him, and he's like ew, and then he'll say something flirty to me, and I'm like ew. <laughs> You're both playing hard to get. Yeah, I've never seen anything never. flirty in my life. Lies. That's all he. That's all he sends in messages. You're uh, a very flirty man. What do you want from me? Robin is sending a question here. Robin Anderson. Uh, I forgot to ask, how did you all like the white strawberries? I think they were pink strawberries, but I was a big fan. I thought they oh, were good. They had a, kind of a mild That was thing. a short film. I was oh, like, oh, oh, oh. that one. <laughs> she was the one who recommended them, and then we found yeah. them, Georgia. So. They were yeah, like they them. were interesting. They were like a, they were a very light flavor. Yeah, but they were um, a more, more mild flavor, which was odd. It's almost like when you have a watermelon, like there was, it was, um, what do you call it? Not hydrating, but not in a bad way where like, sometimes you get a strawberry that is just not moist and gross. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They were, yeah. Uh, more juicy really, but not as a strawberry E if that makes sense. Yes. It's like, like if it. you get a flavored seltzer water, I like mm. flavored seltzer water. Interesting. Different than a juice. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. Is that does that sound reasonable comparison? <laughs> yeah, I just now saw this video that Seth sent, and I, I would have saw the hat. Of now, did you buy that hat now, or did you always have that hat? No, I've had it for like a couple of years. Okay, because when I would die, get the hat for you, Neil. Well, when I yeah, that's true. When I would die, my I like to hear what I would put my head up in because <laughs> I didn't like to wrap it up in things, and so I was like, oh, this mullet hat will do, and so I <laughs> put it in there. That's pretty I sweet. have one as well, so next time we're together, we'll have to take a backwood Bob picture together. I also have one. Oh, sweet. I'm I'm all about this. Yeah. Oh, and also, before I forget, I should not forget this big shout-out to Scott, who did the Q&As. I've been to lots of festivals. I'll be honest, a lot of the Q&As are, like, afterthoughts. They'll honestly ask one question, and if it's multiple people, they sometimes will not even get to anyone else. They'll ask one person a question. Scott uh, made er included everyone, and he asked uh, several questions. And I also like that the festival itself uh, has the Q and A's longer than like uh, you know thirty seconds or a minute. Um, so uh, I thought his Q and A was great. All of his Q and A's, um, he included everyone, and I really appreciate that. And Both mine like and, and for everyone else's, you know. I do like his question about like what was your. I don't, he has a particular way he worded it, but like, what was the, the, the first horror kiss horror? with horror? Yes. Yes. So I had answered, by the way, uh, you can ask Scott was Scott and Vanessa were both on, uh, on without your head and me, um, Michael and Sophia were on, on their podcast. They do a podcast together. So that was fun. But what are your guys? And to answer Scott's question, first kiss with horror, the first horror where you like, Oh, I'm a horror fan now. The first, well, the first horror movie I ever watched was Wes Craven's New Nightmare when I was really four. interesting. And I was four, and I still to this day remember the nightmare I had that night. It was not fun. Did but it the you... first one where I like plunged both feet into horror was Halloween too. It came on TV, and I watched it with my grandmother, and I was like, I loved it. And so, ever since then, like, it was every horror movie that I could. Um, for me, I've told this story before, but um, I came downstairs. I was probably three or four. I don't really, you know, don't remember. But um, my teenage sisters and my mom were watching a Friday the 13th movie on television. I remember seeing Jason in his mask. And I went and laid on their laps and turned my head away from the, the TV, but I could hear it. And I occasionally looked back and it scared me to death, which is <laughs> Partially why he's my favorite, you know, villain of the Q 
killers. But um, so from that moment on, it was a fear to overcome, which is something that like a task for me to take. So therefore ended up loving horror. Um, it's funny you guys talking about like these early, early, early childhood things, because I didn't really think about this. It's not a horror. It was the uh, Ray Harryhausen Clash of the Titans. And I also came downstairs. My uh, parents had a babysitter who apparently was watching Clash of the Titans on the TV. And I came downstairs and ended up being down there. And Medusa came along. And as a little kid, that was terrifying at that time. But it was another one of those things where it's like you still peek. Like, oh, that's pretty cool. Um, but I think the first one was actually conscious of this as a horror movie and I'm t- making a choice to watch it that I remember was, um, I almost said Cycle of the Werewolf, Silver Bullet. It was one of the Stephen King ones because there was so, Neil is from around where I'm from and TV 56, WLVI had Creature Double Features. And so- LVI was, is part of living, living 56. <laughs> <laughs> they had great creature devil features but that got me into going like i went to the library and got the book with all the um oh what's his name gary barry oh shit um oh you did the uh, you did great frankenstein ones he did the uh, swamp, swamp thing um what is his name who did swamp know, bernie Wrightson. Bernie bernie Wrightson. Wrightson. Bernie Wrightson. Okay. So, yeah, then that got me drawing all kinds of crazy stuff because I was so inspired, like, oh, my God, there's like people out there actually drawing these things for real. And I'm not just well, I mean, I was a freak, but there was like proof that other people also did. (laughs) Did all of you guys. And then you ended up drawing this. Yes. (laughs) Uh, Put it right. Put it right in there for a second. Yeah. Oops. Oh, isn't that nice? <laughs> Very cool. I didn't oh, mean to got... you. oh, I have a lot of things. I have some stuff. Really? I had this on hand because oh. I always have this on hand. But um, I had in my notes, we didn't get, you know, because we were talking about the movie, but Eileen Dietz actually um, was in an Anthony Perkins um, musical, I believe. Back really? in, in 1970, yeah. yeah. Tony Award winning. Wow. That's pretty cool. Hmm. Weird coincidence. It, I'm sure it wasn't horror. No, no. no. That's really interesting. Yeah, so I think, I, sadly, I think he was a guy that couldn't really escape horror after doing Psycho. Yeah, yeah. I just want to talk about drawings for a second. <laughs> <laughs> You don't want to see the painting on Seth's wall. Oh, this one? <laughs> yeah. Not the one not now, the who one made that? Movie. It was a horror person who made that. Or someone so, related. I am a huge fan of It Follows. And the lead lady in that wears this shirt that I can't really describe. Of like a blonde woman holding this lollipop that, as I learned later on, is like furry. So I don't know if she like dropped it and was like, ah! But that's the art that's on her shirt in that movie. And I would like Google, like, how the fuck do I find this shirt? (laughs) And I don't even know how. I found the artist's Instagram. It turns out it's David Robert Mitchell's wife. It's Annie, like, now Bandian or something very unique last name. Hmm. And I saw all this weird art and I was like, hey this one i want on my wall and so she sold this to me i didn't expect it to be this big when i got it yeah it's pretty sweet but and then i was like what do i do and so now anytime like people come over for the first time they're like what is that (laughs) like when the maintenance men at my complex come in and like fix things they've never asked about it but i know they have to wonder (laughs) because it's i wouldn't even know how to describe this Mm -hmm. But this drawing that I just pulled up is an Annabelle Lecter original. Because you were telling me a great story. It was a very scary story where I was with Kaylee one night, my friend Kaylee. We ordered, (laughs) through Postmates, we ordered (laughs) pizza from Chuck E. Cheese. (laughs) And we sat up and we watched Blair Witch 2. 
because we're the only people that like that movie. And this guy comes, the Postmates guy comes to deliver it. And so I was thinking, because, I mean, this is, you know, during COVID, he's going to leave it and disappear. Right, right. The non-contact delivery. Yeah, it was like 10 o'clock by the time it got there, because it was coming from all the way across Chattanooga. <laughs> and um, I don't know why we decided on Chuck E. Cheese. I always get kind of embarrassed to admit that. <laughs> I've actually never been to Chuck E. Cheese. I kind of would like to try uh, some Chuck E. Cheese. Don't people. try it, because it'll lead to almost home invasions. <laughs> because this guy, and even in his picture, I was like, Can <laughs> he, he looks like the killer. And... So I'm thinking he's going to drop it. We hear the doorbell ring. I'm like, oh, pause the movie. So I go downstairs to go get us some plates. And I hear this like, hello. And I was like, and I turned and he was in the fucking window of the dining room of my old house, like looking <laughs> in. <laughs> yeah, hold it up. <laughs> it, it, okay. I will say it was not quite this terrifying, <laughs> but he was looking in. This, this looks like the hash slinging slasher. <laughs> and he's like looking in going hello and so i go behind the wall of the doorway and kaylee had went to the bathroom and i was like shit i don't have my phone like i can't call her and say hi <laughs> and so i like peek around the corner and he's not there anymore and i'm like okay and so then i go next to the front door so windows are on either side of me so he can't see me if he looks in and kaylee comes down the hall upstairs it's like it was very open the way this is built and I was like, Kaylee, that guy was like looking in the window and I see her go <gasps> and dive into my room. And I look over and I can see like kind of from the side that he's at the window. He's going, hello, hello. And it, <laughs> it was very scary. As funny as the story sounds, I was like, oh shit, he's going to break in. Like, what would I say if I went out there? Like, thank you for the pizza, please leave. And neither of us had our phones on us, so we couldn't call 911. Like, what we're going to do? <laughs> and it's, like, I will never forget that man's voice. It was much scarier than I can mimic. You survived. Uh, we survived. Shocker. And... I was telling the story and I hear this, I'm on the phone with somebody named Annabelle Lecter. Who is that? And I hear, <laughs> and I get a message and this is what I see. <laughs> and then I was like, no, he was like looking like with his hands more. And then I get this one. <laughs> and this is the one that, and so I had to call Postmates and be like, this dude would not leave. We thought he was going to break in. Like I was fully preparing that we were going to have to fight for our lives. And he was very tall too. And so I, was like, and I can fight for real. So I'm going, oh shit. Like we're actually going to be murdered. Thankfully, you got Thankfully, did you get your Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah. You got a successful cheese. pizza. And then we sat down and we just watched Blair Witch just like in shock. Oh, I want a pizza. Chuck E. Cheese, cheese where kids oh, can I'm, be a kid. I'm sat on Chuck E. Cheese, a pass. Uh, Lucy Moan here in the chat room. I was going to give a shout out to her. Uh, I was building IKEA furniture while listening to the show. You guys made that much more bearable. Thank Aww. you. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah. And um, sorry we, oh, I didn't, we didn't get to see Lou on the final night. Uh, we were yeah. fill up. Uh, it was just there was a lot of stuff going on, and we were filming the very cool video, so we didn't get to. Uh, but um, that was the first time I, I've known Lou for years up through the show. And the first time meeting her, she's very cool. Very nice. Yeah, I believe. I oh, like to say, yeah, I was to say she uh, has a new movie that's coming out soon, which okay. I may be watching later on tonight. Oh, very good. Mm. If that delivery driver's out there, you may reach out to Seth again. He would like to hear from you. I don't even know, like, I. He has a different address. Should I read it out? <laughs> yes oh, read it out. <laughs> i can tell you exactly how to get there now <laughs> i know that was always like because jason's like i'm gonna pop up and surprise you one day and i was like i don't mm -hmm. like surprises mm -hmm. but then i sent an awesome. email from my front office that showed the address at least to the front office so he could locate me through that and i was like <laughs> oh, <shit." laughs> the thing is i actually think that seth might attack someone playing a prank because i think would. Be I would. yeah <laughs> 
So oh, Jason's like, well, I know not to. Yeah. That's why I wouldn't get in that trunk thing in the Airbnb. Is like, if I pop out at him, he may kill me. Yes. Uh, Did you awesome. ever see oh, bodies, yeah. bodies, 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 South? I could see you being one of those kids in that. Yeah. Yeah, I would. I'd be like, oh, that's the killer. Let's take him out. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like that movie? I went in thinking I was going to hate it. I actually thought it was a good movie. I felt like I didn't like it up until it got to the end. Uh huh. Like I was like, these people are—they're all very unlikable, completely unlikable. <laughs> Probably some of the worst characters, and not in terms of writing. Just in terms right, right. Of, uh, but like, by no. near the end, though, I see that that was all intentional. So mm-hmm. it was. Uh, it, I actually ended up liking the movie because of that. Yeah, and the ending, I was like, okay, this. <laughs> This was they got me yeah, yeah bodies 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 i recommend it because you will i would too and i saw the trailer and i was like i'm gonna hate this movie but i'm gonna go watch it because i get three movies every week and I'll, then i can trash it but uh no i actually know i'll be honest if i like a movie or dislike it oh, it's know, got Pete i will, Davidson. Say, yeah, I will say that watching it I knew throughout, okay, this must be a good movie because I'm getting so damn mad <laughs> watching these characters. <laughs> I was getting so damn mad. And then by the end, I was like, you know what? This It's really a smart movie. It's well made. And it it, it yeah. does a good job of, I won't say picking on, but um, talking about like the generation of people who made it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's some of the worst people that I went to high school with. That's what it was about. And I, was yeah. like, I mean, it's kind of unrelatable to me because it's definitely like not... Uh, it's definitely made for a certain age group, I think, but I still, I, still, I could still recognize it as a good movie. You know? So what you're saying is, I know I hate them and kind of like go to the last half hour to watch them all die. But what? what not really. I think you got to watch a whole movie as a whole movie. Yeah. yeah, there's more to it than just. Yeah, that. you have to you have to watch the whole movie, and it is well written as much as it I is. hated the character, and I mean hated with a burning fiery passion. Hated. Once it started, like it was well written, and I do believe that these people would act the way they did and do the <laughs> what they do. And then when it gets to the end, it's kind of like it's one of those endings that you're like, Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I would kind of, oh, I don't know if I should say that. I would kind of associate it in some ways to April Fool's Day, but not in the way that you might be thinking. I'm not thinking because I didn't see that either. <laughs> oh, you never saw that? It's not very good. No. I don't know for it. But Wait, I'm gonna use Lou Simone's uh quote there for, for without your head, it makes uh building IKEA furniture that more <laughs> much more bearable. I love it. Yeah. You know yes. what? That's a compliment <laughs> because I hate having to build fur. That's why I have people <laughs> do it for me. <laughs> I will say this desk is from IKEA. I literally got it for the show. Because I needed a, a land uh-huh. for things to happen, and uh, it is a solid, solid. <laughs> solid. So the IKEA it. people, if you're out there, yeah. you want to. Yes. Uh, I talked about. We were like, "What if we go to IKEA while we're there?" And he was like, "Is there not one in Chattanooga?" And I was like, "No." <laughs> oh, by the way, I'm wearing this pin. I forget. I, I should get the name of it. It's a. It's a new hor- a horror. Not horror crate thing, but it's a monthly subscription. Well, not monthly. It's quarterly subscription. And um, uh, my friend uh, Robin got it. And she told me to get it because it had a. You end up getting in the winter one. It came with a uh, Halloween three scarf, and I was like, "Oh, that's cool!" So I got it. Halloween three scarf, creature from the Black Lagoon long sleeve shirt. I was all about these things. A um, slaughtered lamb, um, nice like Stein. mug, and uh, yeah, Stein and this giant. I didn't realize how big it was, so I put it on today. Oh, uh, I'm not. I'm not really a big fan of the movie, but I like the pin, Land of the Dead pin. But it's it's enormous. I think I could like use it as like a shield to block like a bullet or something. Yeah, when that you would get Chuck E. Cheese pizza delivered, you will live because <laughs> right. of the pin. Exactly. But yeah, it was. A, it's a very fun thing. I like those kind of things. It's like Christmas every time you get it. All right. Anything oh, you, you Mister? Was that? What? Huh? I know you've told it before, but I don't know if everybody in the audience has heard about your first horror movie. Oh, okay. So uh, the first, really the, even the first movie I remember seeing, um, I'm sure I probably saw things before, but the first like memory I have, and then I've been told the story many times throughout my life, and then I, I've retold it, is um, so single mom, 
and my brother's nine years older. So she, she would take him and sometimes his friends to the drive-in and would bring me along. I'm th- I always say I'm like five, but I might have been younger because if she was bringing him to the drive-in, he was probably pretty young himself. You know what I mean? And so I was probably four or, or something like that. And we were watching Night of Living Dead at the drive-in. And it's a scene when they're in the, they get the pickup, they're going to get the gas, it blows up and the zombies are eating them. And I started to cry because I was like, what, you know, and my mom looked back at me. We're in, I think, uh, my uncle's van. And she said, don't, oh, they're just having a barbecue. It's not a big deal. And after that, I I was like, oh, okay. And uh, not to be the tough guy, but I was fine with it. And very few horror movies have really scared me ever since then. Uh, the tall man has always scared me when I was a little kid. And the the biggest thing that would scare me was the trailer for the movie Magic. Oh, that is a scary trailer. That's like a killer doll thing, right? Yeah. 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 The I'm trailer not that. The uh, yeah, it's well. only like eight seconds or something, but it's a, yeah. it's a terrific trailer. I have a question, Jason. Now, I know Seth and Neil had adults in their worlds that did love horror. Did you have an adult in your world that loved horror? No, I guess my brother, but he's only two years older, but he led the way. But no, my dad loved comedies and my mom didn't really watch movies that much. So, Were they cool no. with you watching <laughs> horror movies? Oh, yeah, I could watch anything. The only thing I wasn't allowed to watch growing up was the stuff my brother told my mom I couldn't watch, which was Hellraiser and... The Exorcist and Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which really? I ended up watching by the time I was 13, 14 anyway. But why were those like the there's so many other crazy movies? I don't know. Those were the ones that he reported back to my mother I shouldn't watch. <laughs> so therefore I was not able to watch. Yeah. I remember my mom even wrote would write me. Um, I think it, I forget. Um, I think it might have been Silence of the Lambs. She wrote me out a note that I could go see it when we went to see it. Uh but they never checked. They just let. I was never carded my whole life for for renting movie, seeing movie, until we went to see Texas Chainsaw 3D. Annabelle and I, and I was like 40 years old. <laughs> what a t- well, you know what? They were doing you a favor by now. <laughs> yeah, maybe they're just warning us don't go see this. Yeah, I think that we should all have a screening of that movie because it's been a while since I watched it. I'm sure neither of you guys have watched it. I watch it on a constant loop. (laughs) It's on a loop. (laughs) Get them, cuz. Do your thing, cuz. Do your thing, cuz. I went and saw that with my mother, and we were in that scene. We were like, what's going to be her big line when she comes out? Couldn't have predicted that one. No. And I couldn't believe it. I could not. Believe it. It's been ten years now. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen it since that time uh, we saw it at the at the theater. I think we should all have a screening of it one night. That same day, then they didn't want to serve me alcohol either. And Annabelle even told that she's like, "He's got gray in his beard." <laughs> oh, that's the barbecue place with the kid yeah. behind us, right? Yeah, yeah. Hang kid, yeah. They finally ended up. If it would just been me, they probably because I you were very adamant. Like he's got gray in his beard, and they finally let me have some. <laughs> well you had an id because neil doesn't drive but you have a non-driver id and they're like yeah no, yeah you're count. like this is like, a good you have to have point of having it yeah what's the point of it if it's no good to, to buy alcohol <laughs> oh my like goodness. you have to buy this other id an alcohol id or something come on you have to buy like an id for everything we want to know that you're gonna drink and get in the car <laughs> yeah it's not even driving what i can't so yeah it's even even more pointless <laughs> <laughs> I did I did wish that we had a chance to watch the remake of Texas Chainsaw Massacre because my friend Annabelle Lecter I don't believe has ever seen it. And oh really? I really like it. And I've been I don't know what it ha- the last couple weeks I've been thinking about it and like and that was one of the first I, I don't watched. hate it. I don't hate I think the first one's definitely better. But if you just watch it as its own movie, I do think it's got a lot of good stuff in it. It's Which definitely one are we talking the about? second best in the series. I mean, right, right. You know, you. Well, got, there's a lot of very poor entries in Texas yeah, Chainsaw Massacre, but pretty much all of them <laughs> except for those two. So, like, yeah. well, I like I like part two. I do too, but it's if, not very good. <laughs> if when I was a kid, I hated it, but now as an adult, if you watch it as a comedy, it's entertaining. 
Well, I watched the, all, almost all those with my grandmother when I was a kid because she was like, oh, I went and saw the original in the theater. It was so scary, whatever. And then she put on the remake and she was like, well, this is the remake, but like we can watch this. And then we both really liked it. And then we watched the, the first one and mm-hmm. she thought it was stupid. I liked it a little better than her, but at the time I didn't realize like. I like it better as an adult, actually. Yeah. yeah. And then we watched the second one and it got to the scene in the radio station where he's using his chainsaw and we were like, what? <laughs> and then I remember watching the third one with my cousins. It came on TV. They had the second one on and then they played the third one. And we were kind of like. The it? third one's really kind of like the, I don't want to say typical, but more just like the slasher version of, of Leatherface. Yeah. Um... It's fine. It exists. Yeah. And I never remember what happens in it. Uh, well, you have a big you have a big chainsaw fight with Ken Faree and and and, and Ari Mahailov as little yeah. face. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, you have some things like they don't tie the lead woman down to the chair for the dinner scene. They nail her hands, and I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah. Um it's too bad that the series does not it it doesn't. There's like the first really up till jason uh takes manhattan you could watch those as one long story but you can't te- watch those they don't go together as a story at all it's every single one movie. of them ignores everything <laughs> yeah they're just their own movie all of a sudden except, yeah. except for the remake and it's prequel and i yeah. i remember seeing it's prequel at actually a drive-in when it came out and i wasn't impressed no because uh, it, uh, I don't want to give away because anybody hasn't seen it, but if you're rebooting the series, the idea is like, we're going to start this over and we're going to make like a new franchise. The end of that was even as a standalone movie, it's fine. But to, to like relaunch the series, it was, a, it's very, it wasn't smart look, thinking what we're going to do forward from here. So they really couldn't go do another one after that. They had yeah. to do a remit, uh, you know, a prequel. So I don't Which, know why I they mean- didn't think that through is but then the prequel it has like very similar things yeah it's just not very good make. like they have a climax in a slaughterhouse which for a texas chainsaw massacre movie to do that makes a lot of sense to me because there's so much talk throughout the whole series the slaughterhouse the slaughterhouse and then they finally did that in the remake and then the prequel also did that and i'm like we just had this it's not <laughs> yeah. as well done and, and i in my opinion there's never you should never show the origin of Leatherface because if you watch a first movie, to me, like he's clearly always been demented. He's probably could never be around people. So, so when you try to, you know, in one of them, he's like a normal guy and becomes that character. It's like, come on, that's like, yeah, like, yeah, that's impossible. I remember theorizing about that. I we were I was on the show at the time and we were talking about like what is this going to be and there was this talk that. Is it going to show him as a child and what happens to him? Like in I, I joked about what was going to happen and it's exactly what happened in that movie. So, <laughs> yeah, well, I will give the prequel to the remake some credit that I don't want to watch Leatherface get a pimple, but <laughs> they would answer these questions that we didn't need answered. Like one of the characters <laughs> yeah. is missing teeth. Well, here's an explanation for that. And these little <laughs> things like that. But then there was a lot of stuff they didn't explain from the remake that I felt could have been explained. So right. They didn't do it that well. It had some really good gore, mm-hmm. but there wasn't For a them, good story. There's, prob- there's probably ones that I'm I uh, that do do a good job, but for the most part, usually if a if a sequel like gives the complete origin of like an earlier character, never is very good. It's better just not knowing the it, coming up with your own origin of the guy is better. Yeah, well, also that prequel, it's like, oh, well, there were these events that happened in 1973. So now we're going to go to four years before. (laughs) Yeah. Really? Like, I would think that this would be like a generational thing. And you could even tell a story from 40 years before that. And yeah, yeah. I had a Paul when he's, when he's in a, you know, a young man and. Yeah, and I had a problem with the casting. Jason and I were talking about this recently. The, the acting on the kids that they had like dropped about four notches. And even like some of the character names. Like they have a girl named Bailey in the 60s. Nobody in 1940, <laughs> whatever, is naming their girl Bailey. Uh-huh. You know, things like that that I have a problem with. And we were even talking about like the repetitiveness of the Texas Chainsaw series is 
astounding like three i just compared the other night a scene from the remake and 3d with two girls trapped in a van chainsaw 3d does the same thing and we were even we came up with a great idea she came up with a great idea for something that was very funny but um there's the big the opening scene to the remake is is really good when they find the girl. It's almost like what would happen if someone found the Marilyn Burns character after she escapes? Yeah, you know, and I thought likes. that's what the prequel was going to be was her story, and it's not. And it turns out she's just a prop, which is kind of unfortunate. I mean, and the the remake, the prequel, also you know what the ending is going to be because it's a prequel. Right, right. You know, um, anytime you do a prequel, you know, like, well, obviously Leatherface isn't going to die in this, or you know. yeah. And that was a problem that I had. And the series as a whole becomes repetitive after a while. I mean, th- how many chicks have we watched jump through windows? Uh-huh. You know, I think it happens in every damn movie. Yeah. I-, I do think the best ones also think about the whole family. Cause I think that's more interesting when they, when the, the ones that are just fixated on Leatherface, I don't think are ever very good because he's not really a very interesting character. Well, he but is with they, the whole family dynamic. It, it makes it he he becomes more interesting with people that he can play off of, and because he's he's physically the most dangerous, but he's mentally like a child, and the other and the other family can like um, bully him. Yeah. And that's interesting where it's just him. It's not, it's not really that interesting. Yeah. And it's not that much of a threat because I feel like it would be easy to outsmart him. Yeah. That's yeah. Where- he cannot, he cannot associate with anyone outside, which I always think the original family. So you have uh, the, uh, the guy makes a chili. I don't know what they were, the cook. He, he can hide w- with real people Yeah, and not, no one knows. Then you've got the hitchhiker who's kind of obviously there's something wrong with him, but he can kind of weave in and out of society. Then yeah. you have Leatherface that's cannot even be seen by anyone because they would know like this is you know this is danger and this is somebody who uh, you know there's not there's no way he could fit in society. Yeah, and that was a problem that I have with the remake too is that they don't have that much family dynamic they have enough and they have arlie ermy who basically Mm -hmm. becomes the main villain and is very intimidating there's some good scenes in there with him and his psychological that's something that doesn't get explored a lot in the series is like why don't we have somebody that's more manipulative rather than just oh i'm gonna gut you and eat you kind of thing and Every every movie is always varying qualities with the same thing. You have some kids that like break down or something, and then this family captures them and ties them up, and they get chased around with a chainsaw. And then they have a dinner scene. A girl jumps through a window, and then something. The next day, the next morning, she gets rescued. It's almost always the same thing. It gets exhausting. I was curious why they have never explored an actual family dynamic, not even with the Sawyers or whatever their names are going to be. Why don't they have like a family versus family kind of thing? I think that would be really interesting. Hmm. They never, you. They have never done that. It's always 20 somethings going, you know, across <laughs> like the country. Yeah, Cause other families in that area might know about these guys and they'd be like, you know, they'd have to know something about them. Or There'd not be something, even that, yeah. But like just having a fit, like, why don't they have a mother and father? And then like maybe an uncle and you know, some kids, like, I think that could be interesting to watch I don't want to give away your film idea but i remember i'll just say this the neighborhood and i know you're going to know what i'm talking about i think yeah so are you thinking like that kind of thing maybe it doesn't even have to be like a crazy it could be a normal family you know like hmm. but they oh, never see, now you go back to like this home invasion idea that's where you land a lot this home invasion kinds of things well why well, do you think it's... that that does is an actual fear of stuff it is yeah that's why he's prepared to like stab the world yeah exactly <clears throat> you always well, i mean you you probably write stuff that you know either is personal to you in some way either it's an actual fear or something you can you think about or yeah Seth, can i bring up the that you are a different generation and that we've talked about that do you know what i'm getting at like no, you fears that come for younger people that have to prepare to be murdered by their classmates yeah that's something that's why i like humanoids from the deep (laughs) (laughs) well that was something we've talked about before is that that's a very real thing that i don't think gets talked about a lot is the fact that i was still in school when sandy hook happened Mm -hmm. and that was something we had to have an entire day 
where we would be in class and we would essentially have to act out what we were going to do if so, if the killer came in. With yeah, they do that at my brother's school. Like that's just like like when I was in school and Annabelle and, and Jason probably, you know, you'd have the uh, if the fire drill. And uh, and my like my mom and stuff would have the drills in case there was an atomic bomb. Like what to do? To the desk. I yeah, was and now like people <laughs> like it's you got it because it's a real thing that happens all the you know, multiple times a year. If there's a school shooter. Yeah, and people don't. I don't think. I mean, what else are you going to do? You know, besides try to prepare these kids. But my middle school was alongside a neighborhood. And we would have to, it was close enough that we were like, okay, if we can get uh, in eighth grade, we were like, okay, if we can break these windows, you have to run out there and hope that there's not another shooter over here waiting for people to run out of the building and gun them down. And we were taught that if you see a classmate, you hear a gunshot and you see a classmate go down, you do not look back. You keep running and you run to the nearest house. Now, my plan was always to run for the furthest house and, you know, get further away from the school, but that's something that is very and i didn't even think about that until like the last year of being in therapy and i was like <laughs> holy shit that has scarred and a bunch of people like i talk to justice about it all the time we go into restaurants and we sit down and we start mapping out it's just like now a part of us and i didn't know she did this for the longest time but we would sit down okay so from over here we could get out this back exit but we could potentially run around this way to the front you know start mapping out where are you going to go when they come in and start shooting and that's something i don't see i mean that's are. like nothing that was ever in my mind you know going to school that anything like that would happen but it's yeah. just crazy that now, it, granted, happens. I've it happens so much before. now i hate to say it but when you when i read about it now it's almost like wow just another one it doesn't even yeah. like i say it doesn't affect you but it's just like oh it's just you know another it's one not the thoughts. same as when you would hear about columbine. Yeah, when columbine happened that's you know every that was you know unheard of that something like this would happen yeah and so now it's like so ingrained in me and people in my generation that like i said justice talked to, and she just said we went to a restaurant one day and she just said when i come into these restaurants i always start mapping out where i'm gonna go if they start shooting i was like oh my god dude me too and we didn't even think about the fact that it was affected by these <laughs> things that happen and i mean granted i've known about the killer since birth i've always been ready for the killer but I think that probably amped it up. You came out knife first, didn't you, Seth? <laughs> no, I came out like, yeah. Yeah, I was ready. I knew there was a killer lurking to get me. It's going to be really interesting to see horror movies that come out from people of your generation and how much of that is going to be brought into those horror films. My friend Bailey, in our writing class one time, we had to write like a storybook and draw it out and stuff. And I was never good. I was always good at telling the stories and never good at drawing it out. But he drew out like a whole scenario that was a school shooting. Wow. And in sixth grade, you know, and I didn't really think about that until now. Like that everybody's like, oh, that's so good. That's such a good story, which it was. Like it was very impressive. But like, I didn't remember, granted, they could have said this behind the scenes, but I don't remember any adults going, wow, this is really fucked up. Mm -hmm. The, you know, how often do you see children going to school? They're like, oh, write a story. And it's about, oh, I was at recess with my friends. And it's like, nah, bitch, there was a school shooting, <laughs> you know, yeah. at a very young age. everywhere. Been... Like the industry I work in, I work in mental health now. And uh, I have kid clients and they'll just tell me, oh, we had a, I have a, a, I have a nephew who's, you know, he's going to be 14 and he'll say, oh, we had a, we had a threat. We had a threat. We had a threat. Police had to be here. And it happens all the time. Yep. So him and I have talked about it and it's just very sad that children have to think about anything like that. It's yeah. Awesome. I mean, it's one thing when it is like we do the tornado drills, that was one thing because there is no preventing that. Yeah, but it's a natural, uh, you know, natural disaster. You know, Act I'm much God more scared of tornadoes true. than the killer, like, let me just say. But you know, I just talked about this with one of my coworkers. Her son's school was on lockdown the other day because down the street there was a holdup in a gas station. I remember that happening when I was in high school. It was one of my last days of being in high school before I dropped out, success. And there was like some kind of like robbery or something at the gas station that was down the street and the entire school was on lockdown and nobody could go out but they didn't tell us 
Oh, like wow. nobody knew. And my teacher was like, I just heard that we were on lockdown. Oh, we wow. were on lockdown for a couple hours. And she's like, I'm just now hearing about this. And so we were like, okay, well, if he moseys his way over here, where are we going to go? Because I remember that classroom, we were, <coughs> there was no getting out. <laughs> And you have to think about things like that. And I, I saw a video not too long ago on Twitter of there was, I think somebody walked into their school with a gun and there was a police officer that um, knocked on their door and the kids were all like, nope, don't let him in, don't let him in. And because that's what we were trying to do. If the principal himself, you recognize his voice, he says, hey, it's safe, let me in. You don't let him in because he could be being held up and they come in there and blow us all away. But um this video, there were these kids and the, it was a police officer that was knocking on the door. It turned out it was actually a police officer, but he was like, no, let me in bro. Or something like that. Something really weirdly casual for a cop to say. And they all started like escaping out the windows and running across like, and it turned out it was a cop, but they didn't open the door for him. And that's what we were told to do. You were told you don't trust anybody. Because you don't know if that person's being held hostage. Yeah, yeah, it was that kind of thing. And my cousin, my cousin Haven, her school when all that happened, they made them wear like clear backpacks. I remember when they were designing those. That's unreal. Yeah. Do you think you'll integrate that into your horror in a more specific way? Because I, I know you get into a lot of serial killer, home yeah. invasion stuff. Do you think that you will be more direct about that kind of environment? I have considered writing something like that, but I'm always afraid it might be just a little bit too topical and then be handled poorly on my part and be handled in a way that is not. It's, yeah, Tristy, I saw a movie a couple years ago um, where it was about, a, it was a horror movie about school shooting mm -hmm. and it wasn't a great movie, which made it really like, kind of like it's poor taste yeah it's like oh, i don't i don't care for this like i could see like a poorly made horror movie that's not necessarily about anything so who really cares but if it's something about something so important and yeah. you don't really do a good job with it you're just kind of using like a real life thing to yeah, make something some thing. type of entertainment i don't want it if i were to do something like that i would not want it to be exploitative in any way i would want it to be something that is real but then if it's poorly done <clears throat> the message is not clear and also some of the things i tend to write can be very funny at times and i don't always mean it to be <laughs> but if that were to come up in that kind of thing where it becomes kind of goofy that would be a problem i think you writing from the generation that is has first really faced this to this extent I feel like you would naturally, like any humor I think you would pull in would be a nervous humor that the people would identify with. I would hope so. I would think so. But I think, I honestly, that. I was sitting here thinking about this, and I do think some of the very best art comes from trauma. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they take into account how much even just having to act, not to mention like what people actually go through being in it, but... I don't think people take into account the fact that, oh, we're having to sit up here and prepare to be shot at is as traumatic as it actually is. I didn't even think that until this past year. And I am now well beyond that age. And that's something that I talked about in therapy. And I was like, holy shit, that really scarred, I bet, a whole bunch of us. Oh, yeah. I, I'm sure me and Justice are not the only ones that think like this. Mm -hmm. I would be curious to ask some of my coworkers who are a little younger than me how what is that like now? You know, I have a neighbor who has kids. I would be curious to ask him, do they do yeah. this still? Like, is this still a thing that they have to do? It is. It, I know my nephew does it. Yeah, they, they do it at my brother's school and he works at elementary school. Yeah. yeah. And the kids that but it'd be interesting if that's all you knew, it might have, you might not think about it, but if that comes to you when you're in like uh, a certain age and it didn't happen before, it's going to be a lot different. No, I know with my nephew, it's something that's always been around. He's so young. And that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I think then you might not even necessarily think about it being he out does of place. Think about it. That's my point is that oh, I literally man. have like a person that is exactly what you're talking about. And he does think about it. And I mean, I've lived in a world where there's potential violence, but I mean, I would, I don't, I don't think you get 
numb down to that unless it wasn't happening ever. But when it happens, when it does happen, even though it's not every, well, I don't know how often it's happened now. It happens a lot. And honestly, it almost happens every year, sometimes a couple times. At a least, year. at least. And the idea that like, what do you do? Like, okay, there's a fire. Well, you can probably escape because it's designed for that. And there's going to be a standard procedure that makes sense. But if someone just run around with guns. And it's also someone you've known, like, even if you're not friends with them, you would know them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And I need to talk to my brother about that because he's now 10 years younger than me. So I would be willing to bet he doesn't really remember a time when that wasn't a procedure that you had to take, you know, like a fire drill that makes sense, you know, but Mm -hmm. a tornado drill that also makes sense. You know, we were in school when tornadoes were happening, like as they were touching down, we were in the hallway with textbooks over our head. I don't know how the fuck a textbook is going to protect (laughs) us in that situation. Put a textbook on your head. Maybe it will stop this falling car (laughs) killing you. But It's, it's different when it's something natural versus a person choosing to, bring harm to a bunch of children yeah. and oftentimes these school shooters oftentimes these school shooters are not there's not a ton of them that are the kids that get bullied and stuff a lot of times it's just some crazy like man that will come in and do it that's happened a lot and so uh, by the way uh vic Chavoni says the horror movie that i remember <laughs> first was mr sardonicus and i'm really dating myself on this one Oh, is that, that a black and white one? I think it is. It sounds so familiar. I have to look it up. If he says yeah, I know the name, Mr. I thought it was Dr. Sardonicus. Though, it's, but I it's from 1961. Huh. It was very nice to meet Vic for the first time. Of, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was very cool. Around for years. I finally got to meet him and his family. Yeah, yeah, I've met I met yeah. Vic before, but I never met uh, Faith or or the or the sons. I was very happy to see Faith. I remember she was just a little. A oh, little it's a William boy. Castle movie. That's Mr. Sardonicus. Yeah, I just shared it in the chat. It was pretty unpleasant looking. <laughs> oh yes, very cool. The only picture with the punishment pole. What the hell is that? Oh, I didn't expect. Well, it's a it's a um, William Castle movie, Mm -hmm. and so he he's a guy who did all like the you know did like the Tingler and Thirteen Ghosts and now they oh I've got a little friend down here a mouse just went running by but the um what I'm down in my basement make some brownies (laughs) I don't mind the little mice as long as there's not. You think oh, too giant? If you can yeah, trap it in some cool. oil. I need to find this. It sounds really cool. Yeah, I love it. Look. Yeah, that's it very still cool. looks really cool now, you know. Yeah, I I love these classic things, so I'm gonna find it. I don't think they've ever shown you know shown a lot of William Castle movies at some of the theaters around us, but I don't think they've ever shown Mr. Sardonicus. And they did not have if they did, well, they have the punishment pole. I wonder what the punishment poll is. Maybe maybe, the, maybe they're not allowed to get, they can't get away with such things nowadays. I don't know. It glows in the dark. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, mercy or no mercy for Mr. Sardonicus. In the spirit of foul play, you will decide during the punishment poll by voting thumbs up or thumbs down with your ballot card. Does so? Do they change? Do they play a different version? I don't know. No? Yes, they, they did that they, with Clue with uh, the right. nineteen eighty whatever Clue. They had three different endings. Yeah, hmm. I think they did that with. They had a bunch of different endings for Twenty Eight Days Later when that was coming out. No, really, I think so. I like I the idea that you vote though. Yeah, that's cool. So I put it in the chat if I, any of you are. Yeah, interested. we need to bring in the the you know, punishment poll and. We'd always punish Jason, but it, you know, people decide how we do it. That would be fun. Why me? <laughs> I don't know. I was trying to include you. I was trying to be inclusive here. I want to know what for you guys is a big comfort horror movie hmm. that you watch that you tend to go back to. I for me, Pre-pro. I find I find the fog to be weirdly comforting. 
For okay. me, definitely creep show. I love um, I think it's just a fun movie. It's got it's got cool effects, it's fun, the monster, everything works for me. It's the first movie my mom bought me in VHS tape. Um, I love the cast. You've got some like classic old actors and young and upcoming actors and I like the stylized comic book stuff at the end of, of each of the shorts. So yeah, for me, it'd be creep show. Uh, Friday the 13th, one through six. Mm. Same reason I fell in love with horror. There is something. $200 for a broken meteor. I wouldn't give you, wouldn't two, give cents. you two cents. <laughs> there I'm is sorry. something about Friday the 13th part two. And I think that's because it's the first one of Friday the 13th that I watched. It was also very early on. I seem to start with twos um that's one that i like will put on because it feels kind of cozy to me and like i said the fog that one i was watching that one day when jennifer was here and she's like how can you find comfort in this fucking scary shit <laughs> and I, that neil that's not an exaggeration that's how she talks <laughs> and I, I always like how the first really first six maybe even seven they tell one long story and yep. I do remember like channel 38 or 56 or maybe even basic cable every Friday the 13th when I was a kid, they would show the first, whatever, however many there were at the time, you know, so they'd show the first three or the first four in a row. And uh, it was fun to watch. I also missed horror movies that would show the ending of the previous movie at the beginning. Oh. I, I always liked that. Yeah. Like sometimes it can be time wasting when they show the <laughs> entire ending Friday. The yeah. yeah. Especially if you walk and watch it back to back. It's like, I just seen this another yeah. scene. All over. Like uh, the worst of those though is um, silent night, deadly night too, because that like half the movie is literally parts of the, of the previous movie. Like I'm not exaggerating. Like 40 minutes of the movie is like clips from the first film. I still do like, <laughs> The second, the stuff that is, I like it. I just think that's very funny. Hilarious. Uh-huh. Garbage day is. I wonder if it's maybe they only filmed like forty-five minutes worth of footage, and like we just have to add all this other stuff from the other movie to make this a feature film. Mm-hmm. And like another historic old movie I've seen recently. Which one? End Zone Two. End Zone mm-hmm. Two, exactly. Yes. I had I told the directors of that that uh, that you you uh you that was your favorite of the double feature. Oh, did you? What what did they think but of that? They actually told me that's uh, it's more so um the other way around. But there's been a lot of reviews that actually liked um not a lot, but there's been several reviews that liked Enzo two better. Annabelle Lecter, what is your comfort horror movie? I know one of them. What is it? The Thing. I do love The Thing. Uh, Seth is not finished. That's true. I do need to finish. Great it. board game. It is amazing. I would love it if we do see it together, even if it's like this. That was that was. Fun. Oh yeah, yeah. I will. I'll I'll hold it then, and we'll find a way to do it. Very cool. Um, Amazon allows watch parties, so I think we can because used to, I would have to maybe not so legally obtain some movies and screen share allegedly. Mm-hmm. theoretically mm-hmm. um like we watched it follows one time and that was a disaster to try to get to watch together but that's another one for me too that feels kind of comforting is it follows i like um 80s more early and mid 80s uh john carpenter and stephen king movies like generally i like like i had prince of darkness on earlier There is, I told you about this movie before, a TV movie that John Carpenter did right before he did Halloween. Like, I think he literally left that set and went and did Halloween called, um, I think it's Someone's Watching Me, exclamation point. And it was a TV movie. And it's not like as well made as some of his other stuff. But that is one that does feel kind of comforting. Like John Carpenter just knows how to make a movie that feels kind of cozy. But it's about a woman who moves into this like penthouse apartment and someone's watching her and it, it's i think where he met adrian barbeau mm-hmm. that's really funny that uh this idea of john carpenter movies being comforting because some of them are very um not isolating what word am i trying to think of uh claustrophobic mm-hmm. so do you like being wrapped up really tight too yeah I hate that. That that's the first thing I do 
uh, when we get to hotels, I I pull the the sheets out from from the uh, oh, wow. from the bed. I do not like that at all. I like the sheets to be very loose. I don't like it very tight, but I like a lot of weight. Weight is nice. I don't like one sheet. Oh, I have I to have a piece of sheet. It's hot, 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 hot. You should get away. Even when I wasn't even sure what I was doing, I still pulled the 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 cut the sheet and the uh, blanket out from under the bed. There when we got to the. What does that mean? <laughs> well, Wednesday when we got to the to the hotel, I wasn't it wasn't in all my faculties. But I, as soon as I got in bed, I didn't get right out of the. I pull. I made I sure to pull them out. Yeah. I thought you meant that when you go to hotels, you have a strategy depending on what you're going to do in your bed. <laughs> I well, that's all that's, that's only, if, it, that's only if it's just understand. that's like, only if it's is, me and what Jason. Kind of times are you having when I'm not around, you know? <laughs> me and only if it's me and Mitten, then we uh... <laughs> and then you, you know like, every, every, every time we go somewhere, I end up on the couch. <laughs> what oh. one time we booked a flat in London and then I ended up on the couch. It was oh. a pull-out bed though. <laughs> there was no pull out. It was supposed to be a pull-out bed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean that wasn't it. That was one time, so you can't say every time. Where did you guys the night that you stayed in our Airbnb? Where did you guys sleep? Did you sleep in that corner bed of that? I ended up there. I was on the couch, couch link, but it wasn't. It was like right up against my bad arm. So that my little plan was just was to amazing. stay up, but I ended up falling asleep <clears> on the in the living room area there because it was a little warmer in there. And uh, I was actually sitting in there, and then I just ended up falling asleep. And I slept for a couple hours. So. That little corner bed the first night, Jason. I think everything that, in there was comfortable, to be honest. Yeah. Well, that little corner bed, especially, I, Jason had went to bed, and I was just kind of on my phone. And then yeah. I found myself falling asleep, and I was like, but I need a blanket. And so I just I went into my bed. And, oh, they had and blankets. That little corner I, bed. I think the plane of London, we were going to switch back and forth. But – Honestly, I um, Annabelle can, can attest this. I'm very good about taking the 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 lesser, the smaller bed if there's only one bed in the, in the area or whatever. I gave I you the private room in LA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did, but I mean, I it, it I'm fine with whatever. Yeah, this gotta be <laughs> fair. So next time, if you're in a situation with Jason, you have to share. Then he gets the yeah. big stuff. He gets he gets the bottom. And... He gets the tuck sheet. That's always the rule, as long as he's the bottom man. <laughs> that has not been his rule with me. <laughs> <laughs> See, look, he rolls his eyes, but watch. Later on, he's going to text me something real flirty, and I'm probably going to have the same response. <laughs> this relationship just isn't working. We can't get on the same page. I do know when, when Jason and I went to Toronto, the, the hotel wasn't up to his standards, so we just drove back to Buffalo. Whoa! It had no, nothing to do with the hotel. Oh! I thought it was a hotel. It was like, it smelled like marijuana everywhere it we went. Smell, I yeah, guess they did, the whole, They had just legalized uh, marijuana in the whole the whole area, so you like drove in, it was just like a fog of spot uh -huh. smoke. Yeah, I'm not the okay. hotel, every place, yeah, it was just like no, seeping was everything. <laughs> It's like that if you go up to Knoxville at night, even driving around, you're like, what the fuck? In Massachusetts, I think I was telling you that you can smoke in public now. Like, you can freely just like a cigarette in public. And you will, like, walk into these. I've always hated uh, the smell of it. I was, I honestly think it just smells like skunk. Like, I think yeah, there's a skunk nasty. around here. Or B.O. or something. Yeah, I have a, I have a friend. <laughs> who she's always like that smells so good and i'm like what the fuck is wrong with you <laughs> and then she complains because her neighbors will make chitlins and she's like oh it stinks so bad and i'm like your sense of smell is questionable i've never had chitlins i don't recommend it based on how she describes the smell <laughs> apparently she never knows if her dogs have shat or if it's the neighbors <laughs> jason will be there to get some coffee beans out of it <laughs> are you uh, do they make chitlins there in kentucky i've never seen a chitlin on the menu anywhere ever <laughs> so <clears throat> by the way uh, uh, jason okay. sent me this for for christmas or, i think it was jar. christmas what's that jason i'll occasionally every few years see a jar of them being sold somewhere but 
Yeah, I'm reading about I didn't know what they were. I just read it. And I'm not. Yeah. Fire log, huh? Yeah. That's, this, that's a thought. If, you guys should have got it in Atlanta. So if we get an Airbnb with a, with a fireplace anytime, I'll bring this along and we can make <laughs> the whole place smell like KFC chicken. Awesome. We, Very good. I think that we need to go back to that cabin that me, Jason, Justice, and Lexi all stayed in because it was the best. It sounded very good. It was the best cabin in existence. Mm-hmm. Not that a focus here. Cabin. Yeah, your focus, Neil, is very. You need there to turn it off autofocus because it's just like. Well, the Zoom Zoom resets its its uh, settings every time you turn it on and off. That's mm-hmm. ugly. Why? I don't know. It's a real pain in the ass. But... Oh, well, weird. Like the same. Do you guys know that chitlins are actually chitterlings? Yeah. Gross are the small intestines of domestic animals. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't know. Now I, I mean, culturally, it's not. I know that, like, it's fine. I'm sure it's wonderful for people, but it's not something I'm uh, acclimated to. Maybe it's amazing. It does not sound amazing. <laughs> Never had so. Well, I can't imagine. You don't like sauerkraut. I do not. Neil, do you like sauerkraut? I'm not a big fan, no. I do like, uh, um, no, I don't like sauerkraut, no. Jason, I forget. Do you like sauerkraut? Yeah, I like sauerkraut. Good. I just had sauerkraut last night. It was very delicious. I had it on a hot dog. There's nothing like it. I know there isn't. (laughs) (laughs) I like coleslaw. When I was a kid, I didn't like either one, but over the years, the last couple of years, I really like coleslaw for some reason. Maybe you need to have, but also, like when we went to that soul food place, they had collard greens that you said tasted kind of sauerkrauty, and I didn't taste that. I did not, I was not a fan of their collard greens. When I was a kid, I called it sour crap. I did too. I still I have a journal somewhere from my mother where cold I, I would have been very young and she said we're gonna make like hot dogs and sour crap. Because I remember being very young and trying not to say that because I didn't want to say dirty words. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently I still said it. All I also right. said uh shrimp ling weenie. I would say trampoline weenies. <laughs> what weenie? What was the correct way? <laughs> Mitten looks disgusted at you. So. Confused. That's my confused. confused. That's word. a better. That's a better term. Yeah. Shrimp linguini. <laughs> I see. I see. I would say trampoline weenies. I'd be like, what the fuck is that? Like what that. are some well, dumb things you guys thought as a kid? When I was a kid, I thought the moon was my grandmother's ass. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I, did. I did like i was like how is i don't think any of us are gonna top that <laughs> <laughs> I, oddly well, enough I, I also thought the moon was Sesta's grandma's ass <laughs> <laughs> and i didn't understand like how is she in the car but there it goes <laughs> can you have an issue with popples oh my god oh i wish i had prepared for this because i still have that popple oh where a, what's a popple I, if anybody doesn't know what a popple is, it's a stuffed animal that's cute. That's a little, yeah. It was a cartoon. And it's got a, a big round back that's got a pocket in it so that you can you turn it inside it. out of itself so it becomes a ball. I had yeah. a popple as a child. Okay. So I guarantee you didn't think as dumb as I did when you were a child. But I had one that is pink. I still have it. That is pink. And... um. For some reason, I got it into my head that, oh, this is what it looks like. (laughs) It's the exact one. (laughs) Somehow I got it into my head that if you put it in the dryer, if you would wash it and then put it in the dryer, it would turn into a basketball. And (laughs) so I asked my grandmother if she could wash it multiple times. And she was like, it's pretty clean. Like, I don't know what else you want. And I was like, the last time she did, I was like, okay, I don't understand. I thought if I put my popple in the washer, that it would come out as a basketball. And she had to explain to me why that's the dumbest thing anyone's ever fucking said. (laughs) Man, I I have, I'm not a minor going to be anywhere near that. I just, uh, I used to watch, you know, I still watch wrestling. We used to watch a lot of wrestling and they used to show uh, wrestling from the Maple Leaf Gardens in Canada. And I used to think they said the Make Believe Gardens. 
and I thought it was like the fake Boston Gardens. <laughs> and I would even just say, oh, they're from the make believe gardens. <laughs> Jason, do, do you have they anything? really exist? What do they do, really? Exist? I don't know. I've, I've never seen with my own eyes, so maybe not. Jason, did you have any stupid shit you thought as a child? <laughs> no, I was very intelligent. I'm not sure. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> he stayed that way, <laughs> which for oh. a child is impressive, but as an adult, it's not. I'm, I'm still intelligent <laughs> for a five year old. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very smart for five year old, very dumb for no, no, no. I'm sure there were, but I I don't remember anything. (laughs) I sometimes think, like, what if I could go back to being five years old with the mindset and kind of (laughs) attitude that I have now? You make skin a marink. (laughs) (laughs) Um, are you terrified? (laughs) That is that's more terrifying than skin a marink. Terrified. You can get some some good uh, special effects there when you take a picture of something laying down and then you, you take it away and then you take another picture. Oh wait, that's pretty good. Uh, represent. Oh, there you go. A little higher. A little higher. This just oh, needs to last for two hours. Go? I don't know, Jason. Did you? Did he have enough? Whoa! What just happened? I wonder. I bet his phone died. I'd be willing to bet uh, his phone died. You hate his phone. There's another uh, reason for you to hate it. I want to burn it. The end. <laughs> That's it. I, I do have it. another movie. I know probably anybody listening to this for the movie stuff is <laughs> done with us at this point. But do you guys remember the name of the one where it's a guy? It's like a kind of like a vampire movie, but the main focus isn't on the vampire part. The focus is on this woman like bounty hunter that hunts down some some guy and he ends up like going to creep house yeah do you remember what i'm talking about mm-hmm. she's like got her hair all pulled back and like little um cornrows <sighs> yeah, it was I, great I, I, mm-hmm. his, his phone did die because my text is not sending oh uh, i think it might have been um the night courier maybe oh yeah yeah i think that is it it was great Mm-hmm. yeah and not, not to repeat myself but honestly they they really had a great uh collection of shorts yes and before i forget to i, I almost brought up when we had eileen on when she was talking about this this dark version of the awe uh, of oz mm-hmm. uh treacherous trista part of the without your head world here uh trista robinson her first acting thing that she talks about is she played a flying monkey in school <laughs> Uh, in, uh, in Wizard of Oz, and that's what I believe made her want to become an actor. Awesome. <laughs> She's like, I got to get out of this and do something better. <laughs> did any either of you have any kind of like performance things that you did in school? Like I did, but it didn't work out. We no, I was. We had like a theater club in school that I did not join because a lot of the people that I knew that were involved in that were very pretentious <laughs> and I was not a fan of them. And so I like never had interest. So I would gather my friends and we'd go make our own movies. His phone did die. He said it would be right back. Oh, okay. Yeah. As lame as it, maybe not lame. There's a lot of people listen to this, but probably the closest thing was playing Dungeons and Dragons with like my friends, like the being creative as a player. And then later on as the dungeon master. But in school itself, uh, no, it was very, very quiet. And I was very in shy. Some play. I don't remember what it was. And it was awkward. Really young. I can't even remember it. It was some special smart kid club called Odyssey of the Mind. And I don't remember. But then in junior high, there was like some play about um, Sir, who is it? Sir, not Sir George. Knight, Sir Mix a Lot. The Knight Baby George. Step back. With the dragon. No. Who is it? I guess it is Sir George. Is anyways, it's it's a story about this knight and he fights a dragon. The dragon talks to him, and the dragon had like a two le- two feet, and a kid would be in each foot, a head and a tail, just to give everybody a part. I was in the head, and I made this cool, like it was the lamest costume that they had. So I made this awesome 
head out of out of paper bags. It was really cool for a paper bag mask. And I like used my like a weird voice. I knew all my lines. There was someone next to me that didn't. I'd be like bah, 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 trying to give them their lines. It was awesome. I loved it. It was a great experience. So they had like a some kind of play audition thing. And I bombed it completely, completely bombed it. I genuinely think it's because with the mask on, mm. I had all the confidence in the world because people weren't looking at me. They were looking at this cool dragon. And then when I was out there amongst all the bullies standing there being my chubby self, then I crumbled. I just totally crumbled. So that was <laughs> in my elementary school my elementary school was great because everybody was nice to each other even if you didn't like each other you mutually didn't fuck with each other so you didn't bother each other which was nice but we did have a play where it was like a halloween thing and i can't remember exactly what it was but we did like a couple of us played zombies and we like got up and like had to do like the monster mash (laughs) thing and like limp over to the stage and then i did one that was (sighs) I think it was like Chicken Little or something like that. I remember the sky was falling and that was a big thing. And I played a dog that I think had one line and it was like, oh, she's right or something like that. It was so lame, but I was there. Somebody has videotape of it somewhere. I hope to never see it. (laughs) But we used like paper plates and they would like cut them out and like make the faces and stuff. And we'd have the little popsicle stick. Yes, I'm sure it was very cute. Jason, we were talking about if we, any of us had, like, what our experience had been as a child at school or in some club with anything drama related, any kind of plays or something like that. So I've always avoided that stuff, as Neil will tell you. I, I even tried not to be in the Once in Future Smash. But uh, yeah, they, figured... they were very adamant about you being part of it and then very adamant about cutting you out now. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> Can't blame them. It's like force me in and then remove me from it, but uh, that's fine. I, I'm glad for the experience. I really am. Um, but my first was the third grade. We had a Halloween uh, play where we had to sing and things. The only part I had was singing in a group. Um, but I thought I'd be smart and I dressed up like Jason Voorhees, thinking I'd just wear the mask and not sing. But they wouldn't let me put the mask over my face, so I had <laughs> to had to fake sing. I didn't actually say anything, but. That's what I did. Nobody would have heard me, but I was. This comes up a lot of. I want to hear Jason sing at some point. (laughs) No, you don't. I do. Like, if you've ever heard a cat in heat. (laughs) How mean. That makes me not want to be nice to you. (laughs) Really? You don't crap on people's creativity. First of all, he was singing. Going, I'll be there for you. Like while he's walking around doing things, and we're on FaceTime being quiet. Was I trying to be stupid with it? I don't remember. I hope so. (laughs) (laughs) Jason, do you have aspirations to be a singer? No. When he told me that, I was like, well, there goes my, you know, want to be a singer, become a popular singer at 40. You know, I guess that's out the window. Your dreams were crushed. Yeah. Right. Well, we had great food too in uh in Marietta, the vortex in Atlanta, a great place. I made this beanie off the patch I got there. I'm very excited about it. But I, I finally got to have the fat Elvis, which was bacon fried banana and peanut butter burger which sounds like what in the hell are you doing but it totally worked mm-hmm. i don't even remember what i got at the vortex yours was on uh bread i believe right or was that jason's no it's this oh, okay. and i got the same thing yeah. oh yeah you guys got the banana or, uh, i mean the uh, pickle rick yes pickle. the banana <laughs> i would get the uh i'd get the fat elvis again yeah mm-hmm. i actually got that my first time there did you like it? I did. I did. I don't know if I told this story when we were there, but uh, years ago I went with uh, Jeff and I got the the fat Elvis. He got, it wasn't the biggest challenge one. I think the biggest challenge was like four patties. I forget what they call their challenge. He got like the two, two patty challenge and he's eating it. And he's, he's totally getting meat drunk. 
And by the end, it starts falling apart on him. So he just kind of wads it into into a ball. And he's he's totally meat drunk. He's just eating this ball of hamburger. It's the most disgusting thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and I'm like, why do you keep eating it? He's like, I got to finish it. And I was like, why do you got to finish it? Just stop eating your hamburger ball. <laughs> you call this meat drunk? Meat drunk? Yes, meat drunk. Yes. I've never heard of this before. It's a thing. It's happened a few times in my life. Wow. It's I like this get, expression. Yes, when you get so many calories from from meat, you just it, it's a very faint drunk. It, it really is. We we made uh, one year for Halloween. We made uh, hamburgers with grilled cheese for the bread, like a grilled cheese up top, of grilled oh, cheese at the yes. bottom. Yeah, uh, back before it was really, you know popular to do that, and uh, that it, we both got meat drunk that night too. <laughs> this was uh, with Jason. Where was this? Charlotte. And this burger, it's um, how is that? Mozzarella sticks and chicken? No, it's it's bacon, but it's oh, yeah. bu- it's buttermilk wow. battered bacon. Wow! Yeah, it, it was Charlotte because Troy was with us. Yes, yes. That and sounds it really That's awesome. <laughs> it was very awesome. good, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember what I got at the Vortex. Yeah, not memorable. Yeah, I mean, I don't remember having any complaints, mm-hmm. so. There was that we went yeah, to just the fries. Honestly, weren't very good. I'll be. No. Oh, that's the bacon was unique. So. Mm-hmm. Seth made amazing mac and cheese. Yeah, that was very cool, and I, uh, that's going to be part of our uh, get together. Someone makes something as long as we have a place to do it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I will happily make that meal again because your suggestion to put the chicken and the flour and then the egg mm-hmm. was good night. That that was that was a good suggestion. I have chicken in there right now that I'm probably gonna make tomorrow. So now I'm like, mm. <laughs> oh, we emptied out the garbage from the porch and it was disgusting. Oh, <laughs> it was um, not cool. We had dumped some dead meat into the trash outside, and then I went out there to feed the fish, and I was like, oh, Annabelle Lecter, come out here with me. As I'm like. Oh my god! No. And I was like, "Come out here and watch me feed the fish." I like made up some dumb, and I, she walked outside and she went, Ugh. <laughs> and "Bye." And then the day that like we went out there, I went to change the trash bag out after when we were about to leave, and I was like, "I feel really bad." If I had a piece of paper, I would have left a note and been like, "I'm really sorry." <laughs> <laughs> It was not cool. <laughs> I don't know how Jason didn't gag. I'm surprised no animal got into it. It was so revolting. They didn't yeah, want they, even the animals wanted nothing to do. I have a raccoon that gets into my trash, and they open the lid, and they don't rip the. Uh, they don't make a mess. I don't know how they do this. They're they open it. and they put the lid back on too. And I'm not joking. It's it's insane. This happened multiple times. Open up, and it, it, it's. Ripped at the very top, but not all. Of, they don't make a mess. They pull out like the chicken carcass, whatever, and they even have to put the lid back on, which is insane to me. Are you well, sure it's not some crazy street person looking for <laughs> no, scraps? I'm pretty, I mean, I've videoed the raccoon getting into it, but never putting the, the lid back on. But now they put the lid on. It's they're seasoned. They know how to be respectful, at least. I guess. Yeah, I I even say as long as hey, if you don't make a mess, have at it. It's fine. I don't care. Maybe they understand you. Maybe I used to have a three-legged raccoon that would would get into it, which he, didn't, he never made a mess either. Yeah, he he wasn't the he wasn't the guy who was at the protest, but yeah, I have a video of it on my Facebook. I videoed him. He he would get it. He'd like push the the trash can so it would like fall, but all the way just so it'd be leaning against the deck, and then he'd open the top and he would pull stuff out of it. It was very cute, but he only had three uh, legs. One of them was I don't know what happened to the other one, but. Yeah, what do you think happened to it? Probably got caught in a trap and had to, unfortunately, probably bit his way out of, you know, bit his leg part, not through his leg to get out of it. It's probably what happened. Yeah, I'm not a fan of things like that. Like, as much as I can't stand mice, I don't like those sticky trap things. It's just No, that that's, honestly, you'd better off having something that kills it instantly. That's way more humane than it's stuck there and, like, starves to death. You just throw it away or whatever. And yeah. it's still well, you alive. can check them, but they can... The thing was really hard to get them out to break their legs because they're stuck and they try so hard to pull themselves off. One time my parents had some in our house 
And one time my little dog Spam ran across one running from the vacuum mm-hmm. cleaner and we had to remove some fur. But I mean, he was much bigger than these little mice. But, yeah. And I don't fuck with mice, but I mean, when there was a mouse in my, in my bedroom some years ago, we tried to get one of those that it would go like it would trap itself and then we could drive it away. Yeah. But, How do you feel about mouse-infused vegetable oil? Passionate. <laughs> we used to have uh, one for that for um, groundhogs when we used to have a big garden. It was a have a heart trap, they call them. And then we would take the groundhogs up into the woods and let them out. Well, you have to take them away like two miles or something or else they'll just come back. That's that's what we heard. I guess they came out of my attic, but I'm curious how the fuck did they get in the attic? But if yeah, I get a cat that comes Gus, my kid the Gus the cat gets in my basement here, and I'm not sure how. He he actually got in the basement when I wasn't here. I found out, yeah. Well, we had the humane one to get rid of. We named these mice Mary and Alfred. And they, we came, Alfred ran at us that I have a video of, and we ran away screaming. And then we were like, let's go to the store. We're killing these bitches because we looked over at one point and the humane trap was like crushed. And I don't know how it was like, as if somebody stepped on it. And so we were like, okay, they have to die. (laughs) But we didn't get huh? steam traps when we got the... But then we came back from the store and Alfred was dead. And we still don't really know what happened. Hmm. A friend of mine who shall remain nameless, but you all have met him. Um, <laughs> for over 20 years since he was a kid, he, he loves turtles. So anytime he would see a turtle out when he was out, he would take the turtle to his house, thinking he would release it around his house and he would just have a bunch of turtles around his house. He found out maybe five years ago that when a turtle is removed from within like a certain amount of distance from its home, it's just depressed the rest of its life trying to find its way back home. Oh, that's very sad. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So he was doing this from a child. He's been wow. doing this to turtles for 25 years. I used to have turtles come here, box turtles. This came up somewhere. I think Anvil and I were, we were looking at turtle video, but they would just come to my yard and I would try to keep them as pets and they'd always go away. And even we used to have a fence around the garden, and I don't know how he got out, out of it, but he, they would always get out of it. I like turtles too. Yeah, pretty cool. You have to wash your hands because they're like salmonella. Yeah, so, I didn't at the time, but I was. I, I never seen you them are today. Hmm? That's how you ended up the way you are today. Yeah, turtle handler. It built up my uh, my immunity to salmonella. That's why you didn't die when we were in Texas and we had those chicken tenders. <laughs> yeah. That that happened to us too in uh in um in London. Um, yeah, we had undercooked chicken at was, McDonald's. Yeah. I don't know why we, I think we just thought it was funny that they had McDonald's and we just went to eat there once to see if it was but different. We had to use the restroom so we dug the in. Oh, that's right. And I'm we did yeah, something right. from London McDonald's. Yeah, and I, I don't was it a chicken sandwich I got? Either way, the chicken yeah. was undercooked. And I'm not gonna eat undercooked chicken anywhere, but especially at McDonald's. Well, to be I'm, fair, it probably was okay to eat because I guarantee none of that is chicken. <laughs> <laughs> pretty yeah, sure yeah. here it would have been fully cooked and they just did frost it and cooked it, but over there it was actually raw chicken. Wow. That's true. It wasn't really even, the didn't even look like process. It was like the chicken breast meat. Yeah. yeah. McDonald's with standards. Yeah. <laughs> Oddly enough, we had really good uh, barbecue in London. We thought it was odd, yeah. but it was good. But they set up exclusively for you. Exactly. Exactly. You had good barbecue in Atlanta, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big and fan those, of it. It was really good. Both places. That we got, I think, were better than the nacho fries. Mm, they were really good. Mm. I stick with the nacho fries. Even though we're never going to experience those again. So, well, maybe oh, that place that closed. Something we said? make when we get together. Hmm, that's true. Because mm-hmm. they're good. But Do you, see, really you like nachos like... with jalapenos and such? Oh, yeah. Well, maybe that should be a, a thing because they are, were awesome. They were so good. They were. They were good. The rest of the food, not so much. And now I kind of despise that place because remember what we were reading about them? Yeah, but I'm glad we had the experience because we had all the, all the things. It was good. They had cool art. That's true. And they had crazy people. They had crazy people. 
Yeah, so not just us. More than us. Way more than us. <laughs> so yeah, Renegade Film Festival. We loved it. I had a great time. I had a great time the whole area. Marietta I thought it was very cool. I actually would say I like it better than than Atlanta. It's uh kind of artsy place, a lot of very small uh, shops and and restaurants. That's the kind of place I like. So I really I really did the whole area. Places to buy lingerie. Mm. Well, that was Atlanta because we went to. Um, oh, that's right. That's true. I Burger guess I do Place like Atlanta and too. Found oh. all kinds of like crazy thrift stores and costume yeah. things, and there's some pretty <laughs> sweet pictures of Neil and Jason with hats that you all should check out. Yeah. Very. Uh, and just real very quick, this shirt was given to me for my birthday for, by the very, uh, very cool Annabelle Lecter over here. It's a cool shirt. Yeah. Awesome. You find it. it. I like that. Where'd you find it? I will Street. say, so it can get sold. I actually saw it. Um, I was with my nephew in a mall because I don't usually do malls. And it was in the window of Hot Topic. Oh, really? Yes. That shirt. Jason's going to make fun of me now wearing a shirt from Hot Topic. Um, you've changed so much. I just assume your whole wardrobe is Hot Topic these days. <laughs> Is How there topic any window? Needs to be? No, they actually do have cool stuff. I admit, yeah. It, they had some great t-shirts. I got a t-shirt for myself. Tis what it is. Can't I don't think any of the stuff. I've seen cool pins there, and I don't think any of these are from there, but mm -hmm. I believe this Nosferatu glows in the dark. Hard to tell. It's not dark. Yeah, we'll take your. Just say it does, and we'll take your word for it. Yeah, this glows in the dark, guys. Awesome. It looks kind of yeah. glow. I oh, I turn out the light, but I saw the light from the from the laptops and stuff. <laughs> so I don't think it would make any difference. Yeah, I tried to set up and copy Neil and have cool lighting. It just didn't work. I did the. I I was doing the strobe for a little while, but it was actually kind of annoying me, so I turned it off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Stro Why would you go for strobe? Uh, I was just sitting here and, and the hit these buttons. Like, well, it's not really not strobe. I did the smooth. This is. Oh, it wasn't like. Yeah, it's it's kind of it's a subtle. Oh, it just kind of yeah, goes in and much. out. It's yeah. very distracting. That's what I was saying. But. Well. All right. Well, I this was really fun to catch up. I hope we do this more than every six years. <laughs> I hope so. I think that's the plan. Yeah, I and I mean, our... meet all together uh, yeah. as often as we can, and also uh, doing the show together every once in a while That's when people can cool. do it. Sounds like a good yeah, it's been fun. Yeah. I know, you know, uh, people have stuff going on, but we could do it once in a while. Yeah. Also, the thing game, amazing. Start yes, I love the thing. That was a crisp birthday <laughs> present, actually birthday present from Jason one year. At, yep. um... I think it was at a Mad Monster, and then we didn't play it though till uh, Texas. It was yeah. Kentucky, maybe. <clears throat> yeah, I think it was Kentucky. Let's see. The thing we've been on. Does it have a white top or a black top? White, because I did notice there's another version. Uh, it looks like the same setup, but it's a different version. The token's a little different. Yeah. And it says it's for one to eight players. The one we have is for four to eight players. Where I'm seeing it, now I don't know if this price is everywhere, if you don't mind my saying it. So it's the Thing Infection at Outpost 31 board game. And it really is amazing. And honestly, I think the replay value does make it worth Yeah, it's definitely here. Great. Yeah. It's a, listed here is 60 bucks. But you really could play this. Yeah. Over and over, and, over. I, and the one Jason got me, I believe, is the first edition, which they don't make anymore, but they make yeah. the second edition. And then the, the black box, I don't know for sure. It looks like the same, the board, but the pieces are a little different. In the so I don't know if it's any different, the actual play. And like I said, it's one to eight players. And that one you can also get extensive uh, expansions for, and you can play the Norwegians, which is kind of cool, I guess. But at the same time, who would even want to play them? Well, you want to play the main, the people from the main movie. <laughs> I just think it's an interesting little spin. Yeah, yeah, it is. It I is. like it. Yeah. You get to learn about those Norwegians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I saw an alien one. Movie. An alien one looked cool. I saw it too. Oh, like you're awesome. you're in the you're in the ship, and you've got every that one. Everyone works together, and you have to avoid the alien. 
And then there's like an alternate way to play where one person plays the cyborg guy and I think tries to kill him. Oh, too. So interesting. That, interesting. That would be similar. Yeah. I like that. Do we get to knock their head off at the end? <laughs> as much as I love Alien, that scene, like when it when it goes from the fake to the real head, is not well, it's not great. Yeah. But but it's a, but it's an amazing movie. They did the best they could. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to say anything bad about it. <laughs> yeah, of course. All right, and th- and thanks everyone coming out watching my movies. Uh, it's very cool for everyone to get to see them, and it's fun to watch with an audience. Yes, this is thanks for getting cool. me in the movie. Of course, mm-hmm. I'm happy to help out all my friends here, except Seth. Right? No, I'll help that dude out. Somebody took a massage. Well, I mean, not you know, financially. <laughs> but... <laughs> this goes right for the cash roll. <laughs> All right. So, anything else before we get out of here, my fine folks? Yeah, what's our movie we're going to all four create going to be? I don't think that mm. conversation is going to happen right now. <laughs> yeah, we should, probably should, we should probably do it privately. We don't want everyone yeah. to know. No, let's tell everybody. What? crazy like that <laughs> well what would be the theme um it's probably if they're all four of us to make it i think there's probably going to be some uh goofiness involved so i don't think just straight horror but i, I mean i i like i have a very varied uh i like everything i like crazy um horror i love comedy horror it really depends my mood so I, i'm good with all this stuff could this be like like i don't I know the bare essentials of like uh, drafting for NFL and stuff like that. Like, could we a similar thing? Like, say, I really think this is important. I really think this mm-hmm. is important. That's I really good. This is important. Yeah. And, like, try to like, right. Use that to to make whatever, whatever. Yeah. I like this. Well, we should probably do this kind of setup someday. Not, not to videotape it and uh, and throw out some ideas and then come together on something we can videotape it and then after the movie comes that, out. that's a good that's a good idea not live but cape it and then it would yeah. be good like uh yeah it would be either put it out just on youtube or something or include it like if there would be any type of release for it yeah, if not was, yeah it, it'd be fun to put on youtube or something there was a show that i watched it only had one season it was called the chair where they pick two directors and they would make the same script and they documented the entire process of that it's great I remember you telling me about one of those. It's I, re- I really wish there were other seasons of that because it was very good, but I would imagine probably very expensive. There's uh the transformations of the transformations of something Jenkins. I forget the whole name. I'm sorry. Um, and so similar idea was so all the filmmakers involved, they were given what they thought was one scene in a movie. And then it was going to be put together. I forget there's a name of that, those kind of movies. But what happened was they sent everyone the same scene. Mm-hmm. And so the idea was everyone would just take this very vague script of all the same scene and make, and everyone would be different. Mm-hmm. And it was interesting. I was, I was actually supposed to be one of the filmmakers and I'm very lame and, and didn't do mine, but I wish I would have, but sure. the, uh, but it is out there and it is, it's very, it's interesting to watch. It sounds really cool. It's too bad you weren't a part of it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Lesson learning. Mm-hmm. Don't do that to us. Yeah, I read the. Well, no, I read the script, and I was like, I don't even really understand this. But that was actually intentional. After I found out about the, the end, it was supposed to be vague, where you couldn't really quite understand what you're supposed to shoot. Um, so everyone's was, you know, it was uh, part of the thing was, you know, how do how do people interpret this? So it was it was okay, it's very cool to watch. So one of them tone could be really comedic, and then the other is like right or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it was like they use words like they you like a vessel. Mm-hmm. So what what is you know what could that be? It could be like a container. It could be you yeah. know a cup or whatever you know. But it was cool. It's cool. All right. Any uh who any plugs? Where for sure people go to follow you or what you're doing or yeah. just get the hell out of here. I don't know. They don't they, no one no one needs to know what 
I'm not doing enough yet. Maybe someday I will do more and it will be valuable for you. Yeah, we well, can follow but, you can follow us. Uh, we got the uh, without your head page. You got the dinner and the movie oh, page. Dinner and the movie. I've got some dinner and movies I need to finish editing, yes. but this last this last couple months has been very uh, hectic for me. Yes. But uh, I will get on that. That is, I don't, I don't like uh, New Year's resolutions, but I did make one this year. I want to be more on top of getting uh, uh, videos edited in time. That'd be wonderful. It'd be very cool. I noticed that recently. I went to YouTube and I'm like, I'm very sure we've seen more. Yeah, and I actually have all the. I, I went and I did all the audios. Uh, I don't know if Seth, if I do them right away. For some reason, it's quick, but then if I put them off for like a couple of days, it seems like it takes much longer. Because you need that. Yeah, because I even kind of remember yeah. then too, like parts that like, oh, I need to edit like something out where mm -hmm. just, you know, it's fresh in my mind what I need to edit out and what I have to keep in. And then if I go back to it after a while, I can't really remember exactly what we said. And I got to really pay attention more. You can follow me on Instagram at Seth.heist2. No one should ever Jesus. follow me. I post weird shit on there, though. I'm gonna follow you to your home, Mr. Mitten. <laughs> Hello? Hey, you know my Bandcamp page, Seth Heist. It has this photo, this lovely photo of me. This is, this is a true story, not bullshit, like I said, I'll show here. I was listening to your music earlier today. So that's why the plays went up. Yes, I was, and I really like it. Thank you. I, no, yeah, it was very great. I didn't know. I don't know. I think I heard some of your stuff years ago, but uh, this was, hey. I honestly was, I can see the progression, and uh -huh. it, it was very creepy atmosphere. Oh, uh, yeah. You were, you were listening to Creep Fields. I've yeah, got... I, I don't know where the link I was. It, I don't know if the link was in the in the messenger or what, but uh, somehow I clicked in and I was started, and started listening to it. Oh, yes, because lovely Annabelle Lecter sent it mm -hmm. in our group. That's a talented set. It was boop. as you are. You are very talented and you need to like do things with it. I've got, I've got another one that I'm working on right now that is another horror one. It's very different. Maybe uh, some of the stuff's music could be used on without your head. I agree. I agree. Maybe in, in napkinimations or something. Yeah, I would do that. Jason has listened to me make most of this new one that I'm working on. Yeah, I'll uh, talk to him early in the day. He'll be like, I'm making music by the end of the day. He's got like three songs. No, that's awesome. It does <laughs> happen sometimes. It'll be like boom, boom, boom. J is Jason like kind of your muse for like if you want something like I gotta think of something about a creep and you just like start talking and then well usually he'll like call me and I'm in the middle of it. I'm like hey what do you think of this okay now what do you think of this now what do you think of this <laughs> and then it's over cool. shitty FaceTime so it's different yeah I'll try to associate everything to like a scene in a movie sometimes he yells at me well I, deserve it. And I don't ever yell at you <laughs> He doesn't just do horror. He does all kinds of stuff. It's very diverse. Really, reality TV drama yeah. going on. It's very cool. I'm not good at happy music though. Like if you notice, if you look at my band page, there is like no happy music of all the reality TV music I've made. I think I've made. One. If you think about though, how often do you actually? Do, uh, I don't. Maybe other. Maybe normal people do. But how often do you just sit around and listen to happy music? Um. I, mean, I, I would say never for me. That. Like I was listening to Magic Sword earlier. I don't know if any of you guys know who Magic Sword is, mm -hmm. but it's. I was trying to like gut my apartment, and it was very like motivating. It was awesome. Oh, what about that song "Live It Up" by Mental Is Anything? The Kiss song? No, it's by Lick Mental. It Up. Oh, that's Lick It Lick Up. Lick It Up. Yeah, yeah. I was wondering what you were singing. I was like. I was like, no, that's what I got. That's but, what I'm gonna sing at karaoke. Even, yes, even a lot of like happy sounding music has like sad. We were talking about the friends. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh I yeah, like, I like that kind dark. of idea. Yeah, yeah. It's like your job's a joke. You're broke. Your love life's doa. It's like, well, damn. <laughs> and you got Jennifer Aniston over there shaking her big hair like she's just having the time of her life. I watched that video multiple times, and I sent it to a lot of my friends. Very cool. That's probably the most engagement I've ever gotten on social media. <laughs> Besides when I allegedly 
perhaps theoretically bought some likes on a post on a certain social media platform. Wow. I, I could be making that up. You don't know, but wow. But these were real people interacting, not alleged bots. Yeah, my friend Tara said, ha ha, that was fun. I liked when they threw rubber duckies at you. That was the best. I really was struggling to find a moment where to put that. And then I finally found that little, I was like, <laughs> that was the perfect spot for it. It's very good. It totally At worked. the time, Neil was probably pissed off. No, I no, I kind of like that idea actually. I I looked like I'm pissed when I sit on the couch, and I definitely was not at that point. But I think it kind it kind of makes me laugh. Like I sit down, like I'm like fuck this, but it it kind of is. But I wasn't at all at that mm-hmm. point. Mm-hmm. I wasn't. It, uh, then I was. I wasn't cold or anything yet. It was an ordeal to get that footage onto this laptop. Mm. The the one scene Seth kept saying that he loved was you having the ducks thrown at him thrown at you i don't think i've said that to you once but i mean it's not <laughs> you have you said that, you said you loved it either, either one time. of you guys lies a lot or like uh i think we just remember that, things <laughs> him everything that really happens like you said no i never said that. i openly admit that i like to troll people jason uh, just be telling stories <laughs> maybe it's a yeah him and interest same way <laughs> Maybe it's a southern <laughs> thing. I think Annabelle and I both are like when Seth's telling a story about us, we're like, that never happened. <laughs> I will, like, I'll just be like, J- Neil has done this to me before. He's like, Yeah, we filmed dinner in a movie. I'm like, oh, is it good? He's like, Well, she spit in my face and called me stupid. <laughs> what? That does sound like something I would say, but you like, have, but I would, I would I would I would totally just be making it up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. like, you know, I learned something from you. <laughs> that I do very often where I have somebody that I used to be neighbors with. He'll post a picture of himself on Instagram or something. I'll leave a comment and be like, is this you? <laughs> <laughs> Neil, I do that all the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he used to do that to me all the time. And I'd be like, shut up, bitch. <laughs> and now I'm like, why do I do this to everybody now? <laughs> Cause it, it, I, 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 I understand the mind of a troll. It is kind of fun. Yeah. exactly. Uh, I try to be nicer. <laughs> My inner troll. I had to troll intro a little bit when we were at Renegade on the uh, on the Q and A. <laughs> oh my lord! I caught that. It was pretty funny. Yeah, I got to pop out of Jason, and everyone else was probably like, "What the hell is he talking about?" But yeah, Neil is a troll. It's true. Isn't Kinda. in your head like a giant troll? What? Isn't in your head like basically a giant troll? In- yeah, the the origins of in your head is was a troll because. We were on a, a message board back in the day. It was one live audio wrestling.com. And um, we were all fans of the, the show on there, Get in the Ring. And uh, so we made like a fake version of it. And originally it was just the tech show. And my my big idea was we we're going to interview fans of, of wrestling shows, not like actually wrestlers. <laughs> And so, yeah, it was just a big tr- to troll, uh, get in the ring. And then we just started trolling like the other show and they got really pissed. This was the early days before podcast was a term 2005. So it was people who had actual radio shows and actually went to college. They didn't get degrees. And then it was like these three idiots made this, just this show. And none of us knew what the hell we were doing. And I'm not saying this to be cool, but it got way more people listened to them way more than the other shows. And the other, sh- they like legit piss, especially Monday Night Mayhem, which I'm Jason probably. Well, I don't know if you probably weren't around back then, but you probably heard us talk about it since then, or if you went back to the old show. Mm. And he would call oh. me up, and he started calling my house. That guy. What? Uh, Why? The big, the big mosh. Oh my goodness. And then he would bad mouth, bad mouth us to uh, to uh, wrestling companies not to give us guests. And, it was it was uh like these big it was kind of I went at the time because when I started the show it was in my twenties so you have much more angst and it's cool like having these big wars on the internet but when you're in your forties you're like that that was really lame to waste all my time doing that. And all of Neil's success, all of Neil's success has come from trolling. <laughs> Yeah, he would call, no, he'd call me the David Koresh of the internet and said that like my fans would like walk into the traffic for me. And I that thought it was awesome at the true. time, but yeah. That is, I mean, we've talked about this before about like the cult like nature of 
in your head from time to yeah, time. Yeah, there was a guy that he actually got one of his shirts. He he like won a contest. They got a Monday Night Mayhem shirt. He did a video. Well, he's first he sprayed in your head on it with a with a spray paint. Then he lit it on fire and burned. And the guy, the guy, the guy was freaking out. He's like, "Your fans want to like kill me and all this stuff." But I thought it was hilarious at the time. But now looking back, like if that happened to me, I'd probably think, "What the hell's wrong with these people?" That's what I'm saying. You're a troll <laughs> because you're just like, "Ha ha ha!" Some guy. <laughs> gonna die <laughs> see i'm not that level of a troll <laughs> <laughs> but if you had the power would you be if you had people doing the stuff that they were doing for neil that's the question yeah, there is an age-old troll that i don't want to admit here because he might see it but i will have to tell you guys about it because i think <laughs> I don't know that he'll watch this. Who is it? Years ago, me and my friend, but if he finds this, he's going to actually show up here and murder me. <laughs> me and my friend Bailey, we would get McDonald's on the weekends. And sometimes we'd go out in my neighborhood and eat it like in the road and talk about aliens at night. And this one night he went to bed really early and I got hungry. And so I ate the last few chicken nuggets. That he had. <laughs> and so then he came down like a couple hours later. He's like, where did my chicken nuggets go? And instead of just owning it and being like, I'm really sorry, I ate your food. I'm like, let's gaslight this bitch. And I was like, we ate it in the road. <laughs> and he will still ask me to this day, did we really eat McDonald's in the road? And I still think he questions it because he's like, I can imagine it, but now I'm not sure if it's true. It's been so long. Diabolical. So, <laughs> that, it, was, it was pretty wicked to just be like, instead of just owning it like still to this day he will just randomly text me like did we really <laughs> so now if he finds out he's gonna come to your home <laughs> he'll talk about people like threatening the lives of others and you're like i took the chicken nuggets <laughs> and he still questions it to this day and so now i'm curious i just like, i'm gonna reach out to him on your behalf i'm gonna send him this like you need to see this episode you skip until this time mark you know, no, I'm going to tell him to watch the whole thing. I'm going to be like, watch the whole thing. It will be worth it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to send this when he moves out of state. He's moving. Again? <laughs> he's never moved out of state before. So this is his oh. first time because he's getting married. Oh. And so I'm just <laughs> gone and be like, hey, watch this entire episode. <laughs> but yeah, I'm a much more calm guy now. Mm -hmm. Totally on the up and up. Yeah, you're more sneaky, probably. You're probably doing all the same kinds of... You're just sneaky. No, honestly, when I look back at it, like, I laugh about it, but I do think, like, it was, like, a huge waste of time, and, like, I could have, like, been doing, like, something a lot more productive, but but it is funny to think You built your empire off of that. I guess, but I also, like, burned, like, bridges with, like, with like wrestling companies because oh. TNA would never give us a guest again and oh. uh, some other you, like, wrestling actually companies. just a dick to people? No, but they, they, oh. they, I don't know. It's a long story, but I mean, it's over like decades of time, but the, the TNA was probably over a few years. Mm -hmm. Maybe you should reach out. Be it like, wasn't with them. It was more like, uh, so we'd be, uh, a lot of our fans then would really troll mayhem, Monday Night Mayhem, and we'd all share the same group. And then like, he would, he would like trash us then to, cause for some reason they'd listen to him. And so he'd trash us to TNA wrestling and then they'd stop giving us guests. Wow. I just want to say there's been countless in your head fans that no one's heard from ever again. So it might be a cult. <laughs> or the I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure Neil sacrificed Jai at some point. <laughs> Who? Jai. Oh, Jai. Well, I remember that name. Yeah, God. he's a local guy. He ripped me off of money, so fuck him. Oh. Cult. That's what our movie's going to be about, cults. Cults? I love cults. Be bad. I yeah, that's love why Annabelle liked me originally. That's why we bonded. She's like, this guy's a, well, he's a cult leader. <laughs> he's like a real low-level cult leader. Well, I immediately, you're like, join the chat. And the chat then was in your head and without your head in an actual chat room. That was in the like, yep, I'm, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even there for a day. Like, you know, just so you know, 
maybe don't mix these two groups. <laughs> <laughs> they, yeah, there's, they a, there's a few crossover many. people like Jason and Vic, but the, uh, there there definitely is uh, certain Headyverse members. We I call them the Headyverse for in your head that that are very uh, out there. Yeah, and don't really mix with uh, this. I think women. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's there's women who could, could zoom into in your head, but there's a they have to be a certain very uh really just one, and she doesn't put up with any of the shit. So. Yeah, oh uh, yeah, just one who zooms in. Yeah, I mean, it used to be yeah. several who called in, but once we went to Zoom, it's just the one. Hey, this well, is my sorry. first time zooming in. Well, Faith does anything. too, I guess. What? This is the first time I've <laughs> zoomed into anything. You've never been on Zoom with on without your head. I thought you've been on here. Mm-mm, no, it's all before Zoom. Hmm, I guess so. Oh, well, oh well, I, that's. I, I'm calling. I'm calling you on that. But okay, I'll I'll, I'll play along and say yes. First time you did. The first time I've ever zoomed <laughs> in, but the first time I ever called in was on Skype, and I accidentally had my camera on, and I'm pretty sure everybody that was there saw me go. <gasps> <laughs> For the longest time, I. Like I, you had like a that weird picture of you. Well, I mean, it wasn't of you. It was like a weird cartoon thing, and I would just envision you as that. That's what Annabelle said, and that's why she yes. says like you've got red hair. Yeah, and he I'm does like, have red hair. Have you seen? You guys surely notice. I I always say Mitten has red hair, and he says he doesn't. But it's like uh, red beard. Red beard, like a Viking. It's yeah, like exactly like, like a Viking. Copper tones in it. Up top, Vic says I'll settle for crossover. I see Vic's like a you know he's the, the master. Vic's he can, good. yeah. It's like sane. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't we all? Yeah. <laughs> I know a couple times when I was around Michael and Sophia, uh, with two different occasions. Once was in L.A. and Elaine, who's a another uh, a female uh, in your head fan, and she came out and we started telling stuff like I said on India. I was like. They don't need to know everything about me. And uh, <laughs> same thing with Jason was, and when we were filming the movie, he started telling stuff, and I said the same thing. I was like, they they don't need to know everything about me. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm sorry to call it a night, but I'm like fading fast, and yeah. I've got to get up early. Oh, uh, you got a long work day ahead of you? No. Oh yeah, it's no. long enough, but it's a long day. I'm working with somebody that I don't want to be working with. <laughs> You know who I'm talking about. I do. I do. I think you all do, but I'll tell you, Neil, in private. All right. Hopefully, they're watching. <laughs> Hopefully, everyone's watching. Spread the head. Exactly. Share this with your friends and your enemies. Share it on your Twitter, your your MySpace, your Grinder, wherever wherever you uh you want people to watch it. So I say I'm a banker Grinder page just for without <laughs> no, your head. Just, we need the official <laughs> Grinder page for without your head. Oh, what do you mean spread the head? Yeah, they'll be really let down. I don't know. They'll be like, "What? Well, this is not what I want was going here for." <laughs> or maybe they'll be surprised. I don't. Know. Maybe they'll be happy. Either way, do it. They'll zoom in and be like, who the fuck is this teasing me from Tennessee? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, it's been very fun. It has been very fun. Great to see everyone and mm-hmm. hope we see each other again very soon. Yeah. Yeah, we have to organize a trip. We shall. I'm all about it. Great. I'll keep everyone up to date about uh, the festival runs. And- awesome. Oh, and what's the, the people should check out for the movie they were advertising in the beginning? Uh, with child, yes. Um, the problem with um, I, I'll have the link right here in the video because oh. Indiegogo doesn't really give you like a proper link that you can just say out. It's mm-hmm. like a weird thing. So I have the link right in here. Click on that, and uh, yeah, they have a lot of fun perks, and they were very passionate about the movie. Yeah. All right, guys. All right. Bye. By the way, yeah. music of the month, B Movie Monsters, will be on the Spotify version. Unfortunately, I can't play it here because it gets flagged. So the Spotify version, iTunes will have the B Movie Monsters here at the end, but not the YouTube version. All right. <laughs>